So welcome back all of you to the next day's program on vision inventory and shipping implementation. Nana here and then you can write to me for any clarifications with uh, uh, Nana adapt 60 at gmail.com. Right? And then we are now continuing our thing and then we are now going into the accuracy. Right? So we are completing the three major topics of uh, the inventory. One is uh, controls, one is transfers, one is replenishments. Now we are into accuracy as well. So let's go there and then begin the activity now. So we're now beginning active accuracy. <clears throat> So you can all see that what happens. Uh, there are three topics in accuracy. One is ABZ analysis, one is cyclic counting, and then one is physical inventory. We are now going to begin with ABZ analysis. ABC analysis means what? It is always better control. That is called ABZ analysis. So let us now see but what exactly it is now. So we have a document on inventory day four. One ABZ analysis is there. So let me double click on it and then let us now see this. <clears throat> So here in the ABC analysis, what happens? Uh, we uh, I am now uh, making a fictitious picture. That what happens? I'm now going to have four sub inventories in this place, and then I'm having four items. So item one, two, three is in sub one, and then a two, three, four is in sub two, and then a three, four, one is in sub three, and then four, one, two is in sub four. So this is how I'm doing it. So every item is available in three, three sub inventories actually, and every item is available in three, three sub inventories. <clears throat> so this is how it is done, and then the cost of all items are unity. That is the answer. So we have the cost available as a unity now. Fine. So the unity cost is now coming up. Over Fine. Over so uh, item one means what? 100 quantities, two means 200, three means 300. So it's two, three, four, and then three, four, one, and then four, one, two. So likewise, what happens? We have not distributed all these things. Now, we are now going to perform an ABC analysis on this. Fine. We are going to perform an ABC analysis on this. Fine. Over there. So there is one thing called content scope and then one valuation scope. Fine. There are two things are there. One is a content scope and then one is a valuation scope. So I'll now complete the what I exactly is wrong. So initially what happens, we'll be having an org or as a content scope and valuation scope. Org means what? You're going to consider all the items of all the sub inventories basically. And every item is now considered. So everything is now considered, you know. So even that means what? All the four items will be coming in the picture. Item one to four. And then the valuation scope is org means what? All the quantities of all the sub inventories basically. So item one is available in three places now. So naturally what happens will be 300 quantities. Item two, two, three places, 600, 900 and 1000 dollars. And then what happens for an ABC analysis, valuation is also very important. So the valuation says what uh, item one has got a 300 value and then item two has got a value of 600 and then item three has got a value 900 is 1,000 because what happens all of them are unity in value. So the total compilation value is now 3,000. Okay. Now I'm not going to perform an ABC analysis on what happens on a sub inventory, specific sub inventory, let's say sub two, I'm going to make it now. So I'm now making a, what happens as sub two. So in sub two, when I'm doing it, what happens? I'm not going to consider only items of sub two only. That is item two, item three, and item four are in the sub twos. Fine. Only these items are considered actually. So we have these items coming in. So item two has got only two. Now what happens? The valuation scope is sub inventory means what? Uh, the quantity in this sub inventory is only considered actually. Fine. The quantity of this sub inventory is only considered. So item two has got 200 quantities. Item three has got 300. Item three has got 400. So the total valuation is what? 200, 300, 400. So the total compilation value is 900. So when you perform an ABC analysis on a sub with the valuation scope of sub inventory, what happens? This is the result of it. Now the third one is what sub the content scope is sub, whereas the valuation scope is or that means what we are going to consider the items in this sub inventory only right? three, four and one are the items which are considering for the sub inventory. And then what happens as far as valuation scope is concerned, the quantity which are kept in other sub inventories are also considered actually. Right? That means what? Three is now kept in three places actually. So it is now 900 the quantity. And then item four is now kept at three places, 1200. And then item one, what happens? It is now kept at one, what happens? At three places, 300. So the total compilation value is 2400. So we have this one now. Fine with that. So we have three such combinations which are available here now. One is what? Or gone. The content scope is or, valuation scope is or. This content scope is sub inventory, sub inventory, or sub inventory and or. The fourth combination is a ruled out combination. When the content scope is R, what happens? Valuation scope cannot be sub inventory. This cannot be a subset of this. So the content scope and valuation scope put together, what happens? We'll not decide which items to compile and then what are the quantity of the selected items to compile. The quantity of the selected items to compile is also decided upon this content scope and valuation scope. The next one is what? Now this is now deciding which items to compile as well as how many quantities to compile basically. Next is what? The criterion. Next comes. So in the criterion, what happens? One, one question uh, regarding the third option, sub inventory three and org. Yeah. So what 
what is a real time any example nana where this yeah you see management has what happens they wanted to perform what happens items in the sub inventory and abc analysis actually they want to perform an abc analysis but what happens they have procured this item and then kept it in different places basically items have been kept in different sub inventories so but what happens though so they want what even though they want to perform the abc analysis only on this sub inventory but items have been kept on this place so what happens we have an option of what sub inventory or combinations of them so when you have this combination in which case what happens the quantity which are being kept in different sub inventories are also considered but items of this sub inventory is only considered for your analysis actually they say that the entire or quantity has to be considered for these items actually Okay. Okay. There are all options which are available, but then what happens? Normally, everybody will use only the R G R option. Okay, fine. Good. So, so no, we got all the options over here. Fine. Go. The next one is what criterion. In the criterion, what happens now? We have now decided which items to compile, and then what are the quantity of the items to compile? Let us say now we are having a what happens another what happens example results. A monitor is there, and then there are ten quantities of this, and then what happens? The total value of the compiler is fifty thousand. The keyboard is there. There are fifteen keyboards are there. And then the total value of the keyboard is three thousand. The mouse is there, fifty quantities, and then what happens? Ten thousand total value. Now, so it has now resulted in this now. It has been resulted in this now. Based upon the content scope and valuation scope, we have the result like this. Now I am going to sort the available one. We are going to make a sort. So we can do the sort in multiple ways. One is the on-end quantity. Right? One is the on-end quantity sort. So once we perform an on-end quantity sort, what happens? Here, what happens? Mouse is having the highest quantity, so that will be given sequence number one. Sequence number one is now given to mouse. The next one is what keyboard. Keyboard is having the next higher quantity. What happens? It will be given sequence number two. Then afterwards, monitor will be given sequence number three. So if you are going to do the sorting based upon what happens on end quantity, what happens? Mouse will have the first one. The keyboard will be having the next one, and then the monitor will be having the next one. On the other hand, what happens? It is normally not the practice. This is a practice only for FMCG company. Only the fast moving consumer goods company will be having the on end quantity as a sort criteria actually. normal indices will be going only for on and value on and value on and value means what which is having the maximum value fine now what happens out of this the monitor is having the maximum value that will be given the highest value then mouse will be having the next one and then afterwards keyboard will be having the next one so you sort the incoming one so with the content scope valuation scope and criteria defined what happens you have the complete sort ready now <clears throat> is it clear now so the the abc analysis is being done good point okay man we'll now go ahead and then what happens we'll now do this on the system so let me go what happens i go to the ebis first of all and then go there i will now change the organization to m1 now and let me work on m1 so in m1 what happens i'm working upon and then here what happens i will now go to the abc codes and then abc compiles so let me go on to the compile so i'll now perform a compile now and double click on it now i'm going to perform compile so click on new now so i'm now going to make a new compile now and go there it is a, this is a p50 underscore compile compile one coming in so the content scope can be or the valuation scope can be or there is one combination the content scope can be sub inventory you can put it other here what happens i have to put the sub inventory where exactly in which sub inventory you want to cover it now i go there and then the valuation scope can be sub inventory also this is a second combination so content scope sub inventory and then valuation scope or the third combination is what sub inventory and then the valuation scope is or so once when you choose valuation is or what happens we are now considering the entire Uh, what happens? All the things of this, right? all the quantities kept in everywhere, wherever you are keeping it, as far as quantity is concerned, they are not going to be considered. So, from valuation scope, what happens? They are not considered as well. So, these are these are three combinations. Now, I go there. I will not choose the R guard, R guard, no. And then get the criterion. There are plenty of criterions that are available. Can I go there? I will not choose the current dominant quantity because I am not valuated it. And so, what happens? I know I cannot do it. I will not use the current dominant quantity. Then give us seven. And then give a save. And then I will now perform a compile. If I click on compile, the compile is now going to do for another. The concurrent will be running now. Go there for compilation. Do you want to print the compiler? Saying I don't want to print it now. Go there. And then the concurrent is running. So as and when it gets completed, what happens? You now see the results. So you know, let's see the results now. Go there. So it's no running, running. So once it is completed, what happens? You can now see the results. The compilation would have been 
what happens is chosen as well as sorted also. I can close it now. I don't know how it happened. The control F11, if you refresh it, what happens? You cannot see this now. Right? So we are now given this compile over here now. I'm going to compile. I go there, go to the tools, and then go to the view compile now. If you view the compile, what happens? You cannot see. This item is now having the maximum quantity of 346,000 that has been given the tau value. Point. The compilation value is also coming up over here. Is it there? Again, uh, along with it, what happens? It gives you the cumulative value and then cumulative quantity also. The cumulative quantity and cumulative value is also given. So till now, what happens? This is the quantity and then this is the value. So for the first line, what happens? This is the cumulative value and then this is the cumulative value. So once the second line comes in, what happens? There is having one lakh items. So what happens? Is having a four lakh, uh, what happens? Four lakh fifty thousand as a value, and then you can now see the accumulation value is what the previous value plus this value is the accumulation value, and then the uh, cumulative quantity. And the accumulation value is what the previous value plus this value is the accumulation value. One point eight crores. Now it is one point seven. So likewise, what happens? All the sequences are allocated based upon the quantity, and then finally, what happens? You have the results over here. So everything is now coming. So the criteria for sorting it out is on, so on the basis of the quantity. What happens? You have sorted everything. I go there. What is? Is it clear? <clears throat> One second. Somebody has given a chat message. Ah. Uh, Anita, uh, what about others now? Fine. Are you able to hear me? Anita is saying that what happens? She's unable to hear me actually. Yes, yes sir. Now I'm able to hear you. Yes, no, no. Okay. Able to... Yeah, okay, man. Yeah. You're able to hear me. Hello? Now, yeah, okay, man. Yeah, good. Mm. Now, what happens? We will now go on then see intuition. Ah, yeah. Tell me. Okay. Now, we'll now go on then see infusion about how this is being done. Fusion can now say this now. So let me log in and then have a look at it now and go there. So it's PPT. <coughs> Let's go EMP one now. So one, two, one, two, three. <coughs> and then let us now perform the ABZ analysis of the first star. And go there. I'll now click on it. And then I will now go to the setup and make an <coughs> It's percentage A, B, C percentage and then entry now. So you got three tasks over here now. Right? These are the business objects. Don't go for the business objects, but for the go for the task. So the first task is what? Manage ABC assignment groups. Not this one. Man manage ABC classification sets. <coughs> you have to go to the manage ABC classification sets in which what happens? You are going to perform the ABC analysis now. Go there. So organization is a P501 is all. And click on OK now. <coughs> And then there, I have now come to this place. Click on plus now. Let me create a new classification set. Fine, that is known as a compile there. Here is the classification set. So you know, P50 underscore, what happens? Sir? Classification set. Fine, P50 classification set one now. So I will not take a copy of it and then put on this place. So here also, what happens? We have got the three combinations. One is an R. If this is going to be R, what happens? The evaluation scope can only be R. Fine. It cannot be sub inventory. But if you choose the sub inventory, what happens? The valuation scope can be or or sub inventory. In which case, what happens? So there are three options which are available here now. So let me go for the or gorg level now. Fine. Or gorg level. And then the criteria is what? I'm not going to make it as what? Current on and quantity. No doubt. And then click on submit by which what happens? The, the thing will be made now. I click on submit. So by which what happens? Is not so the concurrent is now the getting process now. 463 is now running now. And go there and then have a look at it now. So the concurrent is running. <coughs> Now you go there, click on the scheduled process now. So click on more and then click on the scheduled process. There you can see the concurrent running up now. Now it's running. So what happens? Create ABC classification is succeeded. I go there now. Go there. Go there. If you make a search, what happens? It will not give you now. Go there. there. Now you select it and then click on the view ABC classification. I'm not going to see the view compile actually there. If you click on the view compile, what happens? You cannot see this. Now, what happens? It gives you this value. Fine. Now, what happens? This item is also in your fine classification set quantity. And then uh, here, uh, you are able to see all these things coming up. It shows you the cumulative quantity as well as what happens? Your, uh, what happens? The value also. Cumulative value, cumulative quantity is also not shown here. But here, what happens? It is not sorted based upon this. Number. 
point. It has to give the sequence number one for the highest item now, but it is not done this time. I don't know why. There are so many small, small issues are there, fine. There are only nine items are there, fine. It has to give what happened, the sequence number one to the, uh, when you're giving, uh, based upon the quantity, it has to give the highest one is there. You're not learning that. So there's not showing you 48 and the community quantity. And then here, what happens? The value is also coming transfer order. Fine, transfer test is not what happens. Costed also. So for which what happens? The costing is available. The remaining are not costed, and so what happens? Nothing is coming out. But I don't know why it has not done the sorting based upon this. It looks like what happens? Uh, uh, again, five hundred ninety-five zero. Again, three hundred is coming. Fine. Again, in the ultra see the fashion is coming. In what way it has sorted? It has sorted alphabetically or what? Somewhere it has not done some something. You know. Even D is coming, C is coming fine. I don't know what exactly is the way in which it is sorted. So the sorting is not exactly happening. This is on the first EBZ analysis. Yes, sorted reverse in cumulative quantity, I guess. Cumulative quantity cannot be uh, the value. Fine. Cumulative is, uh, keep on cumulating it actually. That's how it looks like. No, no. First is 48, then afterwards 100 means 100 plus 48 is 148. 148 plus 95 is this one. So the cumulative quantity will now keep on increasing on every line actually. <laughs> no. That is not the whatever credit in for sorting. It should be only an item number or otherwise what happens, it should be on a quantity actually. It is not done properly. <coughs> there are something, some changes which are there in uh, Fusion so that you have to analyze this. Okay. It is not, cumulative quantity, whatever you put, what happens, every line it will be keep on increasing. It is on that line, up to that line, what happens, whatever is the total value, total quantity which is there, previous line plus this line is this line actually. Is that? Yeah, got it. Fine. That is the way it comes. Fine. I don't know. Now, we will now go and then create the classes basically. Fine, go there. So having done this now, here it is very clearly coming. Fine, go there. The highest quantity is coming, next higher, next time is not coming like this. Here it is not so. There are some changes, but I'm unable to understand the changes now. Fine, go there and then close it. Having done this, what happens? You go there and then create the classes. So let us now go and then create the classes. So we can even have a class A or a class B or class C or whatever way you want to name it as per the end client, what happens? You can very well name it. So here also we will go there and then do the class names now. I click on done now. So we will now go and create the classes. Click on done. Come out of it. And then note the classes. <clears throat> so go there. Put the class. Manage ABC classes is the one. So here what happens? We are now going to get the classes. So click on plus now. So we can even have the A class, B class. A class. And then B class. We click on plus now. It's a B class. Click on plus now. It's C class. So likewise, what happens? You can create n number of classes and give on save and post. Not necessarily three classes, you can even have n number of classes. The next activity is what here we had to go there after having the classes. What happens? We had to go to the assignment groups. So double click on the assignment groups, fine. Go there. Assignment groups, you go there. And then here you go to assignment. So I am now going to the ABC assignment groups. Here I will now create my assignment group, find P50 underscore. Assign underscore GRP one now, and then click on the compile. I will now put the compile name over here. Find your tab now. You are the compilers, and then click on the group classes. So now what happens? So for a for assignment group, it is an association of a compile to the classes. And click on the group classes. Here what happens? Go there. I will now say it's a A as the first one, and go there. And then here I will now choose the class A, <coughs> class A, and then next is what I will say class A now. Class A is the first one now. Class A. Then at first class B, class B, click on OK, and then here it is class C. Having done this, what happens? You give a commit. Fine. Now we have chosen the classes for the compile actually. Afterwards, what happens? We can assign the items. We go there. We go there. Click on the assign items. For the assign items, what happens? You go there. You can now have multiple data. There are only 1,246 items are there. They have been sequenced over there. The total compilation value is around 10 crores. So this much is the value. So 10 to the value. So I will now say up to sequence number 45 is the first class. Or otherwise, I will now say 10% of the total items is the first class. Or otherwise, I will now say valuation. Fine. 70% of the valuation is the first class. So you can choose one of the field or when the remaining fields get auto populated. Either on the sequence number or on the total value or the percentage of items or whatever the value, percentage of the value, they can choose it. The remaining gets automatically calculated. This facility is not there in Fusion at all. They have dropped this facility actually. Of what happens, choosing other ones and then what happens, they're deriving up to what is class A actually. You go there and then here what happens, they'll not go there and then what happens, 75. And then click on it, it will be too easy. 
the last one what happens you have to do nothing as if you click on it what happens it gets automatically created and then committed you can currently be running for doing the compilation and then close it so at any point now if you feel that the compile is not done the assignment is not done properly what happens you can again go there click on the assignment and then i will now say up to two what happens the first one up to four is the one other the balance are in c class so we can reassign it at any point of time we can keep on reassigning at any point and then after having assigned this what happens you go there close it now once it is done you can go and then update the assignment also click on the update it assignment so whatever you have done it what happens you now first two are in a class the next two are in b class the remaining are in b class c class now you say this item is not a c class i want to make a change to a class i can very well do it and then connect so we can update the assignments done by the assignment groups but here what happens in fusion we don't have this much of a flexibility actually flexibility has been reduced now in fusion we'll now go on and see in fusion how do we make that we go there the third task fine is called assignment groups manage abc assignment groups fine go there you click on the stars now <coughs> abc is in group and click on plus now. i'm not going to make the abc is in group go there here it is a p50 underscore assign underscore group fine is assignment group fine go there i will drop down we have got only one abc classification set now go there and then here what happens we have to simply click on plus and then do it manually only Here over there, click on plus and then make it manual. So up to sequence number two, what happens? I will not say it's a A class. Fine, it will be A class. Here we don't have the other options of what choosing the percentage of value or quantity or something. Like that. Fine, we have four options here now in this place. In this place, sequence, inventory value or percentage of items and value percentage. Fine, we can now do it. Here it is not possible. I'm just saying, I click on plus now. And then I will not say the next one is what you go there. And then up to say four is what this one go there. And then what happens is a B class, and then click on plus one. And then here I have to only manually enter that. I don't even what is the last sequence number. There is nothing is displayed over here. Here what happens? Everything is displayed. Over here. See, what was the total number of items there? In the last one, what happens? You don't have to even choose this. Number. So here what happens? I think is eight or nine or something like that. And go there, and then I choose it. And then class C, and then C. So the functionality is reduced in Fusion actually. So click on save and close by which what happened? The assignment is known now. So you go there. You can edit it at any point. I'm going to click on edit and then edit it and then make a change if you want. It has got a reduced functionality when compared to EBS. Then what happens? You go to the EBS here. What happens after having done this? What happens? We can even take a report. We can very well take a report now. Fine, go there. So here we can take a report. I will now say you can go there and then create a report now. So report can be done. I go there. It's a A B C and then give a tab now. So I will now say A B C descending value report and go there or ascending value report. Uh, whatever it is, you go there. Click on OK. Is a ready-made report available now? I go there. It's a, what happens? A P fifty and then give a tab now. And the accumulation criteria, whatever you want to give, whatever you can say accumulated value. Go there. So click on OK and then submit it. So what happens? It will give you a report. If you are not satisfied with the report, you can make a custom report. Now. Whereas in Fusion, no reporting is available as a standard. You only have to create your own OTBA reports. OTBA reports has to be created by us. So somewhat reduced functionality. Uh, they have some justification for this. Why they have reduced the functionality in Fusion? Uh, they have some justification, and then they say that that is sufficient. That is what they say. So if you see the output, what happens? It's not taken some columns basically. So based upon which, what happens? You can see this. So whichever way you want, you can even make custom reports. Whereas in Fusion, if you go on and see what happens, you won't find this at all. If you go to the Fusion and go there, here you cannot see this. Close it now. And then if you go to the what's called, you go to the tools and then go to the schedule the process now. We don't have anything on reports as such. No ready-made reports are available here now. Fine. Schedule new process. <clears throat> and then I will now say A, B, C, and then give a tab. So there are no reports available here. Actually, you will say classification set you can do, assignments we can do, fine. Assignment groups you can do, classification groups are all purging, and then what happens? The creation will be. We don't have any ready-made reports available for taking an output as such. So this completes A, B, C analysis. So we only have to take what happens the ODB reports for this. Any questions? <coughs>
good we go for the next topic now this is called cyclic counting so we'll go for the next topic called cyclic counting now we'll go, that. go back we'll go to d5 now reasons for cyclic counting i'm just using it. i'm not taking the documentation of reasons for cyclic counting double count it we'll go for this one. so what do you mean by cyclic counting so what happens whenever you have materials the system quantity and then the actual quantity may not match in many many industries there is a mismatch of this i have asked my inventory boy to keep it in sub 1 he has kept it in sub 2 right? because of misplacements what happens is there will be a what's called a mismatch fine sub inventory will be reporting 100 but actually what happens will be 98 is there he has kept it in some of the sub inventory damage during metal handling this is a metal handling damage is mhd is a very big problem in many industries what happens when you're doing it? What happens? The item would have got, got broken or it would have got crushed or pulverized or whatever it is because of which what happens in the middle is now no more useful. As well. And during counting only you will understand that it has got damaged. Fine. The person would have done it and then it would have got broken. You would have kept it without any without any informing anybody. You would have kept it in the share package. So once when you go and then count, you will now find that this damage is no more useful for issue actually. So that is not an actual quantity. So damage during metal handling is a big problem in industry. Stolen, utali ayar koi. Those items are also will be will be identified only during counting. Filterage. I am asking you to bring one full hand of oil. By the time you reach the destination, what happens? Half of the oil would have got filterage every time. The powdered items will be getting filterage like anything. That is the biggest problem in the street. And then this Thomas was uh, dreaming with the uh, Aishwarya Rai, big big. And then he has entered hundred as thousand. <laughs> So wrong data entry also will be what happens will be there. and there may be very many reasons to which what happens uh, there will be a mismatch of the system quantity as well as what happens actual quantity. So what happens this can be corrected only by performing a cyclic counting. So here what happens in fusion what happens I have already created the third one now log three uh, what happens inventory three I have created now and then I have created the items also and then I have kept this quantity also I'm not going to have a CC one which is having no control. And then I'm no, I have no popular fifteen quantities. CC two will be a lot control item. It is having two lots, lot ten of two quantities, and then lot twenty of three quantities. And then CC three will be a serial control item, which will be having one not one, one not two, one not three. This I am going to count actually. So I already simulated it. You go there and have a look at it. So I already simulated this now. So if you go to the on-end availability, on-end quantity, let me change the organization to what happens P five Z five three actually. The organization which what happens doing it now. So here you go there and then have a look at it now. So this is not done. I go to the online availability, online quantity, and then click on find now. You can now see the quantities which are there. So we have the quantities over here now. Fine. So CC1 is now having no control 51. CC2, what happens? It has got 2 plus 3. Okay, finally, I'm not seeing this now. Fine. Yeah. Fine. 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 See this one. Go there. CC2 has got two lots of what? Five, two and three now. The first lot has got the lot 10 has got two, and then lot 30, 20 has got three quantities now. And then the serial numbers, what happens? We have three serial numbers. So we have three serial numbers. One not one, one not two, one not three. So as per the plan, I have already done now. <coughs> These items which have already been populated. Now what happens in this place, what happens? We have to enable the cycle count enabled actually. Then only what happens? We can perform the cycle count. And go there, go to the items and then go to the master items. And then for the third item, what happens? So what I did is I have now purposely removed it. And the third item, what happens if you see, I go to the inventory. I have removed the cycle count enabled. That means what this item is not eligible for any cycle counting at all. So that, once again, I have no more for the Korean mode, not this is not the item. So that it is what P50 percentage 3. This is no removed. Cycle counting has been removed. Now let us now create a cycle counting for Let us now create a cycle counting You go there and then you go to the counting. And then you go to the cycle counting and then go to the cycle count. This is navigation which what happens? I'm not going to get a cycle count. So the cycle count is for accuracy, inventory accuracy. So the system quantities may not match the uh, actual quantity, and so what happens? We are going to capture the system quantity with the actual quantity. So double click on it. So let me create a cycle count. I'm not going to get a cycle count. I'm going to click on new now. So yet what happens? I will now go on the create a cycle count. P50 underscore. What happens? CYC underscore count. So you go there, take off of it now. And then put in the description now. Now we have to put an adjustment account. So what happens? What I'm doing is I'm now popping some junk account over here. Now. In reality, the financials will not tell you to which account it has to be. 
we can even have an inactivity and then if you say late days two days whatever this has to be counted today and then after two days time what happens we are now counting it that means what it will be marking it in the back end as a late count actually and then the inventory in charge has to give explanation to the management about when it will be done now what happens when you are going to count it what happens i am not going to give a sequence number now so what happens the cc1 i will now give a sequence number of 1001 and then afterwards what happens the lot control item will be chosen so here what happens 1002 and 1003 are coming and then finally is the serial control number also. so i am not going to give what happens this one so 1001 to 1004 i am going to choose it now let me have the start number as what 1001 and then here what happens i can even have the unscheduled entries over there now. that means what if something is not eligible for what happens counting i can even have it as such unscheduled entries also can also be considered uh, what happens something is not for today and then it is only for tomorrow we can even enter this over here. display the system quantity so that means what we can very well display the system quantity of the person on the host counting so if there is a big difference what I, what you will do is you will not go on and search everywhere whether the item has been kept everywhere or not. Fine. It is all depending upon the company. Fine. Company to company, they may display the system quantity or they may not. I will not say automatic recounts is enabled. Fine. If something is a problem, what happens? You are going to recount it again. Normally, what happens? It will be recounted again. So let us say, if it is beyond the tolerance, let us say, 100, 5% tolerance you are given. You are counted 94. It will not send it to you for recount. And then again, if you are counting it as only 94, what happens? It will not adjust that. Uh, it will not process that. So the orders. And then cyclic counting is not done for all the subunities. We will know specifically you will not do it. And here what happens? Yeah, I got only one subunitary. So there I am putting it. In reality, what happens? You have to choose in which subunitary you want to perform cyclic counting. And you can even multiple subunities can be clubbed together also. So this is the scope and control. Now I go to the serial and schedule. I go there, I go to the serial control. Here what happens? Whether the serial control option is enabled or not, it's now saying fine, go there. I'm not saying it's one per request. If you say one per request, what happens? Every serial number will be given one. Now what happens? Uh, number 1001, 1002, 1003. Then it is 1004. This is 1005. This is 1006. Like this only. So that will be too much of a tax to be counted now. Or the what happens? The counts is big. So what happens? We normally use what multiple per request. So multiple serial numbers are allocated only one request for you. How you want to enter the details? Either the quantity or a serial number or both. And normally serial numbers and quantity. Adjust. Fine. If it is within the tolerance, let us adjust it. But what happens, serial control items are very costly. And so what happens, you won't adjust it. So what you will do is you will not do a review all adjustments. It will be going for review all adjustments. Discrepancies is normally allowed. You don't have the discrepancies over here. Now. I will now select the auto schedule now. The frequency, what happens, I'm going to make it as what daily. So sometimes the system will be showing a zero quantity. What happens, I will now count also. The zero quantities are also then afterwards, what happens? I go to the third tab region, click on the adjustments and ABC. Here, what happens? I go there. So here, what happens? I will not say uh, if out of tolerance, I am now giving. If it is beyond ten percent, what happens? I'm giving. I can even give a variance on the quantity or on the value or there is a hit miss analysis. If I say two percent plus or minus, what happens? If the count results are less than two percent error, then what happens? It is considered as a hit count. So these hit counts will be considered during physical inventory actually. That will be coming typically. So if it is a hit count, what happens? Uh, the physical inventory will be wiving off this particular sub inventory for counting it. They are saying that it is now excellently maintained and so it is not required. Now having done this, what happens? I go to the classes now and click on the classes. So let me choose which class I want now. I, I, I have not done the classification basically. Let me go on and do the ABC classification because I have forgotten that not go there. So I will now go, go to the ABC codes, ABC compiles and then let me perform the ABC. Click on new now and go there. I will now say P50 underscore compile. compile. And then here what happens, I will now say org or and then the criterion is what you go there and then choose the criterion as well, on and quantity, current on and then click on compile now. So I'm not performing in compile. There are only three items of that and go there. So once we'll just perform what happens, you can now see the wait for the results to come now. So afterwards, what happens? You can now see the compiles. So in the meantime, what happens? I'll now go there and then create the ABC classes also for this one. And go there. ABC classes. I will now say it's a A class. Let's find down arrow B class. Then down arrow C class, and then come here. And then afterwards, what happens? They go there, go to the assignment groups, and go on and have a look at the compile again. Fine, control of So it is now complete now. Fine. If you view it, tools view, fine. You can now see this is having the highest item, which is now beginning the top sequence. The next is five, the next is three. So it's what 51, the accumulation is what 51, 56, and 59. And go there. The 
So we have one one items sequence three, and then we have three classes. So we can only assign three three items when we go there. We go to the ABC assignment groups, and then here whatever I will now say uh, P fifty <coughs> underscore assign assign underscore GRP, and then the compile name is P fifty, and then give a tab now, and then here whatever we will now choose the classes actually. And this sort of a flexibility is not there actually there in uh, Fusion actually. Go there and then B, and then this C. And then what happens is save and then give assignment now and go there. Click on the sign. We can only assign one one items because what happens is we got only three items now and go there. Two and then give three. So A item is now having CC one, B is having CC two, and then C is having CC three as per the plan. So the plan is like this now. So we have what happens high, medium, low, or A, B, C and these orders. Now here what happens is go there. It's not all done now. Go there, close it now. A B C assignment is not done. Fine, go there. So here, what happens? I will not choose. Let us say, I will not choose the B class. I will not say what happens. I want to do the counting for fifty-two days, fifty-two weeks. Fine, fifty-two weeks. Counts per uh, week uh, year is what fifty-two fifty-two weeks. And then go there. I will not choose the C class. This is also I want to count it for fifty-two weeks. Then give a complete. Now what happens? You go there, and then I will not assign the items to the B and C classes. I will click on items. And as per the ABC analysis, what happens? B class means what CC two, and then C class means what CC three. But I can even give a ultra C the assignment here. I can choose in any way. So I will not say what happens. I drop down, and then I will not be a B class. Here, what happens if you go and then put the item over there? What happens? All the items will not come. Only CC one and CC two are coming because what happens? The third item we are not enabled it for cyclic complicated. That is why it's not coming. So let us now enable that also. Fine, go there. You go to the window and then go to the navigator now. Fine, here go there. Go to the items and then go to the org items now. In the org items, let me query it now. Go there. It's a percentage three. And then go to tab now. Fine, fine, fine now. So let me enable the cycle count enable. Then only what happens is we come. Close the thing. So it's not done now. Fine, go there. Now we go there and then assign the third items also. Go there. Percentage and give it tab. All the three will be coming. So for the B class, I will not choose these three. And then I will not go there. I will not go for the C class, and then I will not choose the percentage one. I can choose in any ultra fizzier fashion, and then I need not have to go there. The control group item. This is basically in our company we call them as insurance pass. Say for example, this is a fuse. Fine, this is a fuse is a very small man, but if this fuse is not available, and then if the fuse has got blown in one of the main main equipment, we have to immediately replace it. So the equipment doesn't start means what the production may even be hampered. So even though this is a fuse, what happens is a very important one, and then we will now consider this as the insurance pass. We call them as the insurance pass. Fine. So if it is an insurance pass, what happens? It will be kept under the lock and control of the inventory in charge. And those which are under the control group items, what happens? They will not be normally counted at all because they will not miss at all. So control group items are not counted actually. So likewise, what happens? So we are now done the manual association of what happens the classes to items, but at a later time, what happens after a week's time or after two weeks time or after a month's time, we find that this is not okay. I want to synchronize it to the A B C. In A B C, what happens is that we have a, what happens A class as C C one, B as C C two, and then C as C C three. We can very well do it. So if you feel that whatever you have done is not okay, what happens? You close it now, and then you you what happens? You do the initialization with your A B C and this. I go the P T and give a tab now, and then I will now go for reinitialization. No reinitialization and commit. Save it now. So once when you submit, what happens? A concurrent is running now. So wait for the concurrent to complete now. So once when the concurrent completes, what happens? It is now initialized. Fine. What happens? It will all be done. We will now requery it now. And go there. Take a copy of it and then go to the query mode and then requery. So once when you query, what happens? You cannot see. Then what happens? If you go to the classes. It is now reclassified. Fine. Now the A also I had to say that 52 times I am going to count in a week now. Fine. In a month now. Fine. Commit and then close it. And then have a look at the items now. Fine, you can see it has got reset with these things. A is A is C C one. The whatever you are given manually, everything is thrown out, and then it has got what happens reinitialized with the A B C classes. This also I am going to control. This completes setting up the what happens cyclic counting. It's a very big process actually. Fine, you have to do a lot of activity on this now. Fine, so we will now start to do the setup of it in Fusion actually. Any doubts on this now? So nobody is having any doubts. So we'll now go on and set up the cyclic counting in Fusion actually. So for which what happens? We had I have not created the org and all because what happens? That will be a good exercise to create again again. So I will now what happens? Create the location first, and then what happens? Inventory org next. No, 
So let us now go there and then create the location map. Okay, fine. Right. We will now do what happens. We will set up a maintenance. <coughs> and then here, what happens? I will say manage locations first of all. So manage locations is the one. So I go there and I create it now. I go there, manage locations. I'm creating it now. So here, what happens? I will now go there and then I will now query for the P50 now. We will now see how many locations we have created. We will now see the locations creation. So we already created. So we will now go for the third location. I click on create now. So let me get the third location again. The third location is under creation now. I will do that. So let us now create it. So it's P50. Define underscore lock underscore three. So take copy of it now. And then put another code now. And then put another description also. We will now associate the org after we do the org creation. So here, what happens again? This is not required. Nothing like that. So, address is what? LDR3. City is New York. So, once I give it to you, what happens? I'm going to choose this parent geography for this now. And then go down. Zip code is 10020. If you know these addresses, you can very well populate. With your known values, basically. Go there, everything is not unfine. Go there, click on submit. So, by which one of the third location is now created. Now, after having done this, what happens? We go there and then create our inventory org. I click on yes now. We will now create the inventory org. Go the post. Click on OK and done. Come on. So, let us now go and then create the inventory org. So, manage inventory org. Manage percentage. INV percentage R percentage. So let us now go here. Manage inventory organization. So let us now see how many orgs are there. Now I go the P50 and then I give a query. It will now show you 0, 1, 2. I go there. I am now going to look at the third org. I click on plus now. <coughs> okay, the third org for this one. So it's P50 underscore child underscore R3. So organization code is what P53. And then here I will now put P50 and then give a tab. <coughs> and then here address is what P50. And then I will now choose the third location again. Okay, so you have a distinct org location combination. Have, a, have it as a habit. Drop down and then choose the legal entity. The moment you put the legal entity, the profit center also will be coming automatically. And then click on next now. Go there. And then here, what happens? I will now choose any schedule. Doesn't matter. Fine. Okay, fine. It's not a big one. Because what happens, the inventory is going to work for all the all the days basically. Only for planning central, it is a must. You have to put the appropriate schedule over here now. For the writer master organization P50 and then give a tab now. I will not choose the master or go you know, that. And then always have the habit of locator control data when it's a minute call. And the best exercise one go there. And then after having this, what happens? You go there, go to this place. And then here you make the uniqueness is what unique across items. And then here there is another field mandatory. I will not fill up this mandatory field. And then here you go there and then go to the item sourcing defaults. What happens there? What happens? You make supplier as a default. And the thing is there, what happens there? You pick the type of supplier actually. And go there. Here we don't have the org. Fine. Inventory org is not available. Only supplier is available. Whereas in EBIS, both inventory as well as supplier is available as a source type. Actually, item sourcing. So click on save and close by which what happens? The org is created now. Then let us now tie the org to location. Fine. Go there. Click on done now. And then you will now go and then tie the org to location. Go there. So manage percentage. What happens? Locations. Percentage. And then let's go there and then tie it. So manage locations the one. I click on it. And then let's now query the location. And then tie the location to R. P50 is the one. I query it. So let me query it now. Go there. And then the third location, I'm not going to query, query for it. And then let me tie it. So go there. And then what happens? It does not come for edit now. So I have to edit it. I can edit and update now. So let me edit it now. Click on OK now. Mm -hmm. I'm editing it now. Then go there. Inventory org is P50 and then give a tab now. So once you give a tab, you can see this. The third org, I'm choosing it. Fine. Click on OK now. So the location organization tie is now made. Click on submit. Click on S now. And then we have to have the sub inventory in place now. Fine. Go there. Let us now create the sub inventory. So let us now create the sub inventory for the strength. Click on done now. Come on up it. So we manage sub inventories and locators now. Sub percentage. 
block percentage and ring now so let us now go there and get the locators manage up in the locators so here what happens i want change the org to p503 now fine we cannot change it now tell me why we cannot change it anybody we give okay i i think here it will be allowing but in some other place it will not allow okay don't okay, plus now here it will allow okay don't plus now fine what happens i'll now say someone now fine and then always have the habit of putting the locations okay and then click on save and close that's it we are going to have only one sub inventory for this now fine brother because in the transactional area we cannot see this at all fine for which what happens we have to go for manage data access now fine and manage percentage data percentage access percentage so we have to give the data access now fine brother so if you don't give the data access what happens it will not be possible for us to be able to find the manage data access for users now and go there and then we are giving it now <clears throat> go there and then click on plus now so for this user we are going to do it it's a p50 underscore emp1 give a tab now so the role is a inventory manager that is sufficient now fine for this exercise what happens we go then give an inventory manager the drop down and then inventory or go there security context is what p50 and then what happens or three so we are going to go or three click on okay now and that's it fine for this exercise is more than sufficient now fine go there for the third or we are given the inventory manager go click on save and close now so we are not done it now what happens before we create the item what happens we have to go and then do the data what happens uh, the functional security and data security right? manage percentage what happens item class so we have to give the item class for this now go to the manage item classes and then we have to give the item classes over here so select your root item class and then click on edit now so whenever a new org is created you have to give the function security and data security you go to the security area and then give a plus now you click on plus now So click on plus. <clears throat> I will now add the product data snippet. And then give a tab. The Vora one, you choose it now. Choose the Vora one. And then click on OK. And then I will now put the org over here. Now find go that org is what P five zero three. So give a save and close after having given this. And give a five zero three. Give a save and close. Give a save and close this now. And then afterwards you go there and then query it again now. And then we will now modify the template for this. Now, for this again, what happens? We have to give the data security. We have to give the data security also. You go to the security and then give the data security as well. So, function security is not defined. You go there and then go to query by example and then query your R now. It's a P five zero three and then enter it now. We're querying it now. So, select it and then here what happens? We are going to give the data security as well. We have to give the data security as well. And click on what happens? Action select and add now. You can now see the P five zero three coming up over here now. And go there. Click on search. Everything will be coming. So in one go, what happens? You go to the actions, then click on this one. Everything gets selected, and then go there. Click on apply and OK. And go there. So after function security, give a save and close. After data security, also give a save and close. Now, give a save and close. So there was a bug previously, and then it is preferable to do like this. Don't give a save, save, and then do it. Mind save and close, and then do it. Now go there, edit now. Now here we are going to modify the template also. And go there. Let us go to the templates and formats. And then let us now modify the template. Go there. In this template, let me query my uh, P50 template now. Fine, go there. Go to the query example now. My organization is P50 P500. Fine, go there and then query. Uh, we have this P501, then. Ah, one second. I don't know what it is. It's the P50. I'm not query for it now. I'm using this template. So this is the one. I'm not query for this now. Fine, we will now have a purchase data also. You are. <sighs> Purchased item for P five zero five zero one. So this is the one template I am going to apply on this now. Fine, go there. There, what happens? I will now modify one of the attributes now. Fine, go there. Specifications. Now. So in the specifications, I go to the inventory now. Fine, go there. Go to the inventory. So here, cycle count enabled has to be enabled. Fine, go down. Fine. I will now enable the cycle count. Fine. Uh, <sighs> where is it now? It is not us. Oh, I am now in a different area. Fine, go there. I have to be in the inventory actually. Let me keep my cursor on the inventory now. On the inventory, what happens? We will have one cycle count area now. Cycle count. What happens? Cycle count enabled is yes. So only when the cycle count is enabled, what happens? It will be possible for us to perform a cycle count. So the template itself, I have modified, and so what happens? There is no need to do anything. So give us save and close. So this completes the activity on the root item class now. We have added our item with the function security and data security. We have gone to the template and then enabled what the 
cycle count enabled on the screen. Let us go there and then create the items. So now we are going to create the item of answer. Click on done now. So let us now go on and create the item. And click on it. So make on. And then go to the product management and then go to the product information management. Product management and then go to the product information management. And then let us now create the three items CC1, CC2, and CC3 now. The three items are getting created. Click on it now. Click on create now. So we are going to create CC1, CC2, and CC3. And go there. So it's a P500 and the master are we are creating it now. Put it now. Root item class, I'm going to put it now. So root item class, go there. The template is coming. Click on OK now. So it's a P50 CC1 of the item. I'm going there. Click on it. So P50 underscore CC1. Fine. With a no control item. And go there. So that's it. I think you go there. Go to the association then. What happens? Association with child R. So click on actions and then go to select an ad. So we are going to associate with the child R. Now. Go there. So P503 is R. In which what happens? I'm going to assign it. Now. Fine. Select it and then click on apply and then done. And that's it. Fine. And then give us save and close. Now, what happens? We go there and then do it. Fine. Go there. Click on it and then click on create item. Now. So let us now go and then get the next item. Now. CC2, I'm going to create. Now. And P500. The root is the master. Here's the root item class now. And then click on OK. <clears throat> go there. It's a P50 underscore CC2. Go there. It's a lot controlled item. So go there. And then in the specifications area, we go there and then we'll now make the lot controlled enable now. Go we go to the inventory. And then enable the lot control now. And lot control is a full control. For the second item, what happens is the lot control item. And then these two are coming. Anyhow, I'm not going to give any manual values during the final day. I will now put some value over here now. I'm now manually going to populate the lot. I'm not going to generate the lot actually. Leave it as such now. And then go there. And then go to the association, then associate with the child R. Click on actions and go to select an ad. So I'll be associating to the child R. So go there. It's a P503 is a one entering. Select it and click on apply and then click on done now. So it's done and go there. Save and close. So the second item is now created. So let us go there and then create the third item now. The final item for the success which is CC3 now, which is a serial control item. P500. I will launch with the master of here. Go there. It's a root item class. And then click on OK now. CC3 is a serial control item. Go there. It's a P50. Underscore CC3 now. It's a serial control item. We go there. And then go to the specifications and then go to the inventory. We go to the inventory. And then here, what happens? We are not going to make it as a serial control item. We go to the, inventory. the serial control will be a dynamic one. We will make it as a dynamic. Dynamic entry of the inventory. So I will not associate it. Fine. Go to the association and let me associate it. For the actions, I'm going to select that. So let me put the P503 org now. So for which one of them associating it. Click on apply and done. <clears throat> That's it. We are now completed the creation of all the three items. Now let us now perform the transactions miscellaneous as per the plan. So as per the plan, what happens is we are going to have what? CC1 has 50 work quantities, CC2 has what? Lot 10 has 2 and then lot 20 has 3 and then CC3 will be having 3 numbers. So let us now create the quantities in the inventory now. We go to this, click on this icon, and then you go to the warehouse operations, then go to the inventory now. So click on the warehouse operations, then go to the inventory now. Go there. Let us now create it. So click on it now and go there. And then we are going to create the miscellaneous transaction. Click on miscellaneous transaction here. What about the now say EMI and then give a tab now. Miscellaneous result and go there. Click on OK now. Account is what you put one and then give a zero and one ten hundred and ten thousand then go there for us and then afterwards what happens go there click on plus now and then let me do this first item is what I will also say CC one and then give a tab now go there so CC one and I'm coming and go there so I will now say it's a P fifty percentage one and then give a tab it's coming go there this is sub inventory. And then it is for 51 quantities. Go 51 quantities. Go there, give a plus now. 
and then what happens in the next line? I'm going to add the CC2 now and go there. So P50 percentage 2 of input app. And then here, what happens? I don't know. What happens? Sorry. <clears throat> Cancel it. P50 percentage 2 and then give it app. But here, go to the view details and then there, what happens? I will now add the lots. So for a lot number, what happens? I will now give the sub over here. Now. The moment you give the sub the transaction quantity and lot will be enabled now. If I drop down. So once you give a sub-inventory, what happens? The transaction quantity and lot is enabled. But if you put a quantity and transaction quantity is two, and then give a tab and then give a lot, the transaction quantity will vanish. Now, if I go to the lot, the lot, what happens? I will now say P50 underscore lot 10. If I go there. So once when you put the lot, the transaction quantity value is added. So you have to put the lot number and then afterwards only transaction quantity. The order is what? Sub-inventory first, lot next, and the next is transaction quantity. So P50 underscore lot 10 for 10 quantities, if I go there. So click on OK. <coughs> And then we'll now add the next line. If I click on plus now. So let me add the next line. So it's P50 percentage 2 now. If I go there. The same item. If I click on the view details now. It is for lot 20 now. Go there. I will now populate the sub inventory now. So let me populate the sub inventory over here now. Go there. The sub inventory is getting populated. And then afterwards give the lot and then afterwards transaction quantity. I go there. It's a P50 underscore lot 20 now. As per the plan. So as per the plan, what happens is lot 20 now. So lot 10 of 22 quantities and lot 20 of 3 quantities. So lot 20 and then go for 3 quantities. Now. And then give a OK now. Fine. Finally, the serial counter item. <coughs> go there. <coughs> Click on plus now. Let me add the final item over here now. Fine. It is P50 percentage 3 and then give a tab now. <coughs> Click on view details now. <coughs> so sub inventory I am going to populate now. Now what happens, the serial number will come only when you populate the quantity here. For a lot, you put lot first and then transaction quantity. For a serial number, quantity first and then after a serial number. Go that way. If you put it, then only what happens, these buttons will come now. The buttons are coming. So serial number is ULTA now. I click on the record, a lot serial numbers. And then here what happens, give you a plus and then I'm going to give the manual numbers over here. I'm not generating it now. Go there, 101 and then give a tap to 103. And that's it. Go there, click on OK. And then give a save now, fine, go there. That's it, fine, click on OK. So all the things are now done, fine. The plan is now done, fine. So 51, and then uh, 2 and 3, and then 3. So click on submit, by which whatever the transaction gets completed now. So now we'll go and then have a look at the point now. And this org, I'm not giving any item number, but the org is there because there's a double star now. Fine. And then click on search, it will now show you all the items in this org. So you can now see there's a 5 now, fine, expand it, and then here you see now CC2 is now shown there, fine, expand it. And then you want to show you in the supplementary how many lots are there. Lot 10 of two quantities and then lot 20 of three quantities. If you expand CC3, it will now show you all the three serial numbers there. Expand it. No show the supplementary and go there, expand it. So here it will not show you, but you can now see the serial number it is in the bottom now. Serial numbers can be seen in the bottom now. If you click on it, it will now show the serial numbers one not one not two, one not three. One, three. And the final item is what 51. It is not having anything. There's no control item and go there. It will now show you the supplementary one. And that's it. What happens? Everything is now simulated. Let us now go for cyclic counting. Any doubts still now? Now we have to set up the cyclic counting. Let us now go on the cyclic counting. So we have seen the receipts. We have seen the peak waves from, from what happens the transfer orders. So the peak waves from sales order has to be seen now. The peak slips from movement request we have seen now. In inventory we have done a lot of activity. Shipments also we have seen now. Fine. After the peak wave, we have done the shipments. Now we go for the final one called the counts. We go to the counts finally. And we have to count the counts. On the inventory area, fine. So here we go to the counts. And then here I'll now create account. Click on create account. So click on create cycle count. So I am now going to create a cycle count over there. Okay, click on create cycle count. Go there. And then here, what happens is the count name I'm giving it now. Fine. P50 underscore. What happens is CYC underscore count one. And then what happens is the train actually fine. We have to set up everything. So which sub inventory do you want to count? I will not select it now. And then enable file. Include in the count actually. Normally, what happens? All the sub inventories are listed, and then a tick mark will come if we are including it now. So here, what happens? Uh, we are not done the ABC analysis now. Fine. That's why it's not coming. So let us now perform the ABC analysis and then do it now. Fine. Go there. So let us now perform the ABC analysis. We go there. So let us now perform the ABC analysis now. Fine. Go there. So I will now go to the ABC analysis first and then perform it. I'm going to set up a maintenance and then let us now perform the ABC analysis of this. It's percentage ABC percentage and then entry now. 
So it's the ABC, what happens, I will not say. These are the business objects, don't go for the objects, but go for the task actually. So I will not go on to the classification set of the Manage ABC classification set. And then I will not say what happens. It's a P50 underscore classification. Classification set. There it is known as a compile. Here it is known as a classification set. Take a copy right now. Go there. Click on the description now. It is the org org level. Fine, go there. Criteria is what? Current on and quantity. Current on and quantity. Fine, go there. Click on submit now. It is not done, fine, go there. So it's all coming. And then what happens? We have to view it now, fine. We have to wait for the concurrent to complete now, fine. If you, you can search it, what happens? It will not show you. It is not yet come, fine. It's still running actually. So click on it. And then wait for the concurrent to complete. Once it is come, what happens? The button will be enabled actually. Fine. Click on search now. Now the button is enabled, fine, go there. Click on the view ABC classification set items. You cannot see the three items. CC1, CC2, CC3. Now what happens, it does not come properly as per the, what happens, the quantity order. Probably I might have given a, what happens, a wrong one in the previous one, I think probably. I might have chosen a value or something like that, so shown over here. So if you choose the current on and quality, value, value what happens, on and quantity, it's not showing you 551, 513 is the order, which does not. So the ABC analysis is not done. Fine, let us now go and then create the classes now. Fine, go there. Click on done and then come out of it and then it does not create the classes. So click on manage ABC classes and then it does not create the classes. So click on plus now. So I will not say E class. And click on plus now. Fine. It is org specific. Every org we had to create. So click on plus now. And then look at the third class. C class. And then click on save and close. No done. Click on done now. And then now what happens? You go there. And then uh, you will now go to percentage uh, ABC. And then enter now. The final one is what assignment groups. Click on the assignment groups now. So we are going to go to the assignment groups now. Click on plus now. So we are now going to be the assignment group over here. It's a P50 underscore assign underscore GRP1 now. I will not drop down. We have one ABC classification available there. And then here, what happens? We had only manually add. There is no such what happens. There, there are multiple facilities like EBS is not there. Thank you. On plus now. And then I will now see sequence number one goes to A class now. A class. It doesn't show what is the last item in the class also. That is also not shown. There it will not show. So I'm not somewhat comfortable with the fusion at all. And then click on plus now. You go for the third one. What is the last sequence? I have to find out from some other place. Then only here it is not showing me the last sequence also. And go there and then choose the C class. So the assignment group is now complete. Now. Now we have to create the cycle count only. Click on save and close and then come out. Now we have to get the cycle count in fusion actually. So we'll now continue that tomorrow. Essentially. EBS is somewhat better when compared to what happens in fusion actually. They have done a simplification, but a simplification uh, does not mean that what happens, you're leaving some futures basically. I don't know why they have done like that. Some or other, what happens is not that good actually when compared to what happens. Eve is busy. <laughs> so, we are going to work on all the days, and so what happens uh, tomorrow also will be a working day. So, it's not fine. We'll now continue on this cyclic counting tomorrow. Any questions? Hello? Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'll be sending a mail regarding the videos which we want actually. Okay, yeah. So mostly by to tomorrow, I will send a mail across. Okay, then, yeah, fine, yeah. Okay. So, anybody else has got any doubts? <clears throat> okay, then, if there's no doubts, what happens? We'll not call it a day, and then we'll now meet tomorrow at 9 p.m. India. By 9 5, I'm going to start exactly. Fine, I will not wait for any more time. Fine. Bye for now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, welcome back all of you to the next this program on efficient inventory and fusion shipping implementation Nana here and then uh, we are into the accuracy part and then uh, we have configured what happens uh, the uh, abc analysis has been updated now we are into cyclic counting actually so let's go there and then have a look at it now <clears throat> so 
So before we go into EBIS, uh, what happens? Uh, efficient cyclic counting. We'll now see about how we have set up the cyclic counting in this place now. I will now go to the change organization first of all. And then I will now say P. <clears throat> it's a P. Uh, uh, 50 underscore INV3, the one which what happens, we're doing it now. We go there. And then let us now go to the counting and then go to the cyclic counting and then go to the cyclic counts. Now. <clears throat> so cyclic counting, cyclic counts might have on it. And then you can now see this now. <clears throat> Over there, if you give a control F11, what happens, you can now see this now. Sorry. I was wrong with that. Let's say F8. Control F4, close it now. <clears throat> cyclic counting. You go there and then give a control F11 now. It's not coming like this now. It has to show me this now. Change organization to M11. And then put M11 here there. And then go to the counting, cyclic counting, cyclic counts. And you give a control F11. What happens? It has to show me all things. Okay, it's not showing here. So we're going to change organization to P53. <coughs> we already configured this now over here now. And you go to the cycle counts now. It does not give a control of the one. It is not showing. Okay, but yeah. You click on open now. So I'm opening it up. I click on open. So here I will again explain you what exactly I have done now on the cycle counting. What happens? I have now given an adjustment account. <coughs> so whenever anything is missing or anything is found new, it will be hitting this adjustment account actually. And then the rate days too. So if you're going to count it after some two days time, what happens, it will be marked as a late count to the back end. And then what happens, the inventory in charge has to give an explanation to the management about why he has counted late actually. And then I have given a starting sequence number. Now, and let's go there and have a look at it now. This place, we go to this place, we go to the e-list documentation, go to the inventory, <coughs> and then go there. So we'll be having one now. Reasons for cyclic counting and open it up now. So in this, what we have done is, Go there. So we are given these four sequences now. Fine, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. Fine, that is how it is not done. Fine. So the start sequence number is this now. Go there. The start sequence number is this. So 1001. The unscheduled entries, if there is anything which you want to count which is not in the schedule, what happened, that can also be counted. We are now displaying the system quantity of the counters also. The automatic recounts is normally one. Fine. In our industry, we used to have only one asset count. And then afterwards, what happens? We will now choose a specific sub inventory for doing it. Not all. So, cyclic counting is now specifically performed only for a specific sub inventory. And then I go to the serial and schedule. In this, what happens? A count is what multiple per request. That means what multiple serial numbers are clubbed together in one request now. So, here 1000, 101, 102, 103 have been clubbed together in one on 1004. So, that has been clubbed together. So, we will now enter the quantity as well as serial numbers. And then adjustment, what happens? Normally, you won't adjust if possible. And this we won't be using it in our company. So we normally what happens send it to the inventory in charge for approval actually because what happens they are all very costly items and then we don't just like that approve it actually. <clears throat> if anything is missing, what happens? It will be going to the inventory in charge uh, attention to what happens again. Discrepancies normally allow it, and we don't uh, stop any counting and stop and go there. We have now made an auto schedule and then what happens? The frequency is daily and the count sequence is there and go there and all that. And then afterwards, what happens? I go to the adjustments on ABC. In this, what happens? I uh, what happens? In the ten percent has been given as per the training is concerned. What happens? It will be normally not high. This, uh, it will be very low actually, one or two percent. So if it is out of tolerance, what happens? It will be going into the inventory in charge uh, uh, approval actually. And then the hit miss analysis is also there. And if it is plus or minus two percent, what happens? It will be considered as a hit 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 count. And then if any hit count is there, the physical inventory will be getting wiped off. And then I have given the ABC initialization. What happens? I have now completed it. I know that by which what happens? You can see the classes now. The classes are ABC classes. You are now counting it for 52 times. And then afterwards, what happens? The items are there. I know that you know, the items. The items are coming here. The control group is there. What happens? This is basically we call them as insurance pairs in our company. So that means what? If the particular item is not available, the production may even stop. Or it is a very critical uh, item. It may even be a small fuse also. <clears throat> So such items are called to control them. Control group items will be normally under the strict uh, what happens the control of the inventory in charge, and so what happens you will be able to <coughs> what happens there will not be much of a loss anywhere. Right? You won't normally won't count the control group items. So you can decide whether to count the control control, control group items or not during counting. So this is on set up on the uh, what happens here. this thing now fine on the EV is now fine. Let us now go on the set up infusion. 
எல்லாம் போதன் செட் அப் இன் ஃபியூஷன் ஆ சோ वी आर सिटिंग इन अ ஃபியூஷன் ஆ கோ தேர் லெட் மீ லாக் இன் and click on the counts in this what happens we are now going to create a count now <coughs> like so we'll now uh, go on the create account now click on it and then we'll now create a count now. so click on create cycle count i will now be creating a cycle count now is almost similar to what we have in ebay so not much of a change as such now go there the count name i'm putting it now and p50 underscore cyc underscore count I'm putting in over and over. <coughs> and then what happens? I have to select the subunities now. I will now select it and then include in the count. If there are multiple subunities, everything has to be selected and then include in the count. Include, if you put it include in the count, the tick mark will be coming over here. I click on include count, the tick mark is going to come over here. And then I will now initialize with the ABC group itself directly. Go there. So I will now choose this one. <coughs> I will now make a complete one. And go there. A, uh, the uh, synchronization mode is complete. So now I give a save now. I give a save now. You must provide a value for the attribute maximum days before the event. Okay. So it says that you cannot be saved just like that. Now fine, go there. So we have to do it afterwards only. So I am now going for a complete one. Fine, go there. Go there. You go for that, then go to the next one. <clears throat> so click on the next one. And click on that. You go in the tree actually. In the tree, actually, click on next. You go to the defined schedule. So I will now say automatically schedule. And then the frequency I'm going to mention it. Fine, it's a daily frequency. Is the one I will not put any schedule. Okay, and doesn't matter because what happens is not that. Any anyway, I will not choose our schedule itself. Go there. No go for P50 itself <clears throat> because that must be a working day actually. Fine, that is the only thing. So P50 facility schedule. I will not get the working day. And then the next schedule is today. I will not go there. And then put the next schedule. The next schedule is what today's day. I'm putting it up. Go there. And then approval required. Fine, go there. I am not saying approval is required. Go there. it is out of tolerance i'm not choosing it is out of tolerance i will not say positive 10 and then negative 10 and normally what happens it will be done on the adjustment value basically fine if it is a beyond certain value then approval required but since we are not cost all the items what happens we are not using this value we are using only the quantity tolerance so it can be a value tolerance that will be more appropriate in accounting actually because what happens if something is missing so much of money is missing then what happens it comes into the knowledge of the inventory in charge actually So this part is now complete. Define schedules and approvals is now complete. Fine, go there. You click on next, and then go to the define parameters. So click on text, and then what happens? The define the next parameters. <clears throat> and then here, starting sequence number, I'm going to give as one thousand one as planned actually. Fine, go there. So maximum days before late, I'm putting it as two. The maximum recounts, I'm going it as one. Go there. Start date is this, and end date I'm not putting anything. Fine. Manual counts, fine. Even the unscheduled entries, we call them in emails. Fine. And then here we have one more extra thing called manual count sequence prefix. Fine, this is, there, is not there as such. And then we'll be counting the zero quantities also. And then display the suggested quantity. How much is there? Fine, we will display it now. And then you go down. So serial numbers or like, it will be multiple per request. Fine, I will not choose the multiple per request. So I will not say adjust if possible. No, I will not review all the adjustments. That is the normal selection. I'm doing. Fine. <clears throat> So record count serials. I am not doing it. Fine, go there. I am going to record the count serial. Serial numbers also fine. Uh, serial discrepancy is allowed. Fine, go there. We know normally allow. We allow it. Fine, go there. <clears throat> If uh, particular serial number is another other place, whatever, we will not count and then we will not identify this. No, basically. Fine. Now possible hit and miss percentage. I will not say two percent. By which is not that. Fine, go there. So this tab region is also complete. Any doubts? <clears throat> the defined parameters is not good. Now what happens? Sir? Uh, define classes and items is coming fine we'll now give a save now fine only when you give a save what happens it will be coming i think because what happens it does it has been given there now fine we'll give a save now so once when you give a save what happens the classes and items will be coming and click on save now so that define classes items is coming upon saving what happens is now coming because we are now given a initial uh, what happens a class to be initialized on this now if you click on next now we go to the define classes and items now 
And here economy say, you can now see the ABC classes has come up. But against which one of the items are not coming here. I don't understand why it's so. But only the classes are coming. Items I have to manually populate. Whereas in EBIS it's not so. In EBIS what happens when you are initializing with the one, what happens you can now see the classes have come as well as items to the classes are also coming out of an And this is a very incorrect way. I don't know why it's so. The items are also coming. But there, if there are plenty of items, thousands of items, how to manually populate it, I don't know. This version, somebody please make an R&D of this. Not fine. Only the classes are coming, the items are not coming. As per this. Tushar, fine. Wow. Just make a check of it. Not fine. How to bring the items also. Fine. That's very, very important. Because manually populating the item is really very difficult. Getting it, na? I will not give a save and close and then requery now. I will not give a save and close. And then what happens? I will not requery on it now. So let me requery it now. I click on search now. I am requerying it now. I will not select and then click on edit now. I will not edit it now. <clears throat> and then here, uh, what happens? It has now gone to none now. From complete, what happens? It has gone to none actually. Fine. I will click on next now. So all there. Click on next. Define parameters. Fine. This space is okay. I go there. Define classes and items. There. What happens? You can see items is not there at all. So let me add the items manually now. Tushar, are you hearing? No, no. Yes. Okay. Click on plus. No, fine. Because manually populating the item is not at all feasible actually. If there are multiple items, so thousands of items, how to manually populate it? I don't know what to do on this. No, fine. This portion I am not clear upon this. Even though we initialized it with the ABC assignment group, that's not coming. Item I'm populating in offhand P50 and then percentage one, and then I'll give a time. Some percentage one. Cancel it. So P50, percentage one, and then give a tab. CC1. Why is not coming? Sometimes the percentage works, sometimes it doesn't work. Not P50, right? it's a CC1 or something like that. No? I will not say CC1 and then make a query on this now. Is it going to be P50 over there? Not sure about it. Uh, I will not say P50 underscore CC1 and then make a query now. Directly. Oh, nothing is coming. Click on the advanced. And then uh, and that is, I will not say uh, starts with P and then give a search now. Well, no item is coming actually here. <clears throat> item starts with description keyword catalog. Go the only things which are there actually. P T. No item is coming here now. <clears throat> uh, can I can I clear that one? Uh, P fifty, yeah, and then try to. Uh, now clear on the uh, click on the what's called uh, the magnifier directly. And then I will put P over here and then click on search now. Hmm, what is the problem here? Okay, I think uh, select it and then uh, item here itself. I will now say P fifty. Then give a go now. Error a value is required. What is saying now? The PT underscore CC1. Now. Am I in the proper organization now? See whether I'm not in the proper organization or not. It's a 503 only. 503. Now go there and then have a look at the items now. <coughs> Click on it. And then I go to the warehouse operations and then go to the inventory. And then I will now work on P503 now. So P503, click on search now. It has to show me the quantities now. So it's not showing you find P50 underscore CC1, CC2, CC3 are there as such now. And then uh, we have enabled them for cyclic counting, isn't it? Fine. Let me go and make a check of it now. Whether it is enabled for cyclic counting or not. And then go there. <coughs> and then uh, we go to the product management and then go to the product information management. Let me see whether I have enabled it for cycle counting or not. I might have modified the template, but even then I will not make a check of it. 
the for the browse items and query for the ppt <coughs> Say P fifty underscore CC and that will have the amount to search now. It has to show me all the three items now. Go to the go to the child org and then wait now. Go to so P fifty CC one child org and then have a look at the <coughs> specifications of this now. So go to the specifications and then you go to the inventory. Cycle count must have been enabled on this now. Cycle count, oh God, it is no. I think I have modified the template, isn't it? I have modified the template, that's what I feel. No, fine, no, enable, no, fine. Whether it's a master control item, fine, we're not doing it. So let us now modify this. No, whether it's not enabled, I don't know why it's not let us now, let us now enable for other things. So let us now enable it for cycle counting actually. We go there. We go to the specifications now. We click on the specifications. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? You go to the what's called inventory. And then uh, here I will now enable it for cycle counting. <coughs> cycle counting is no, actually. I'll now make it as yes now. <coughs> and then click on save and close now. That's a mistake. I'll now make a check of the mistake also. Fine, go that now. Then click on turn off. Now I'll now because the second item point it was a PBCC2 on the 500 now. So it's a master control attribute. So you go to the specifications and then I go to the inventory now. Click on the inventory. Cycle count enabled is yes. <coughs> Cycle count enabled is yes. So click on save and close. Now. And then go for the third item also on the master close. Master. Go there. And then go to the specifications. And then go to the inventory part of it now. Click on the inventory. And then I will make it as what? Yes. Second count enabled is yes. So all the things have been made as yes now. Save and close now. So let me go and then check whether I have done it properly or not in the template actually. I click on it and then go to the setup and maintenance. And then let me query the item manage item class. I might have forgotten that I think. Or I might have done it after the item creation actually. Manage item class. Now go there, manage, manage item classes now. Now select it and then click on edit now. <clears throat> so here, what happens? You go there and then I will now go to the security, not to go to the templates directly. And then let me query my template now. So go there, then go to the query mode now. And go to the query by example. And then I will now choose the P50 and then enter in now. So this template, I will now go to the specifications straight away. The specifications I will now go to the inventory and then okay, go to the inventory and the specification inventory if I go down and now see this now. Oh god, this is a mistake I made. I might have made a yes or something like that, but I must I have forgotten to save or something like that. And cycle count enabled must be yes. So once when you before you create the item, what happens? It has to be enabled actually. I made a mistake here. Okay. And save and close. Okay. Now what I will do is I will now make one more cycle count with this now. I click on that now. And then we have already completed the ABC analysis for this now. I will click on sign down. We have already done. So that we have seen now. So let us now go there and then create one more cycle count on this now. And that is the best way. So here, what happens? We have this place now. And I will now give a cancel now. So here, what happens? I will now create a new one. Click on it. I will now say P50 underscore psych underscore count to two i'm going to make it now and go there so let me do this count two we'll now see whether it works not there click on it now. and then i will now include in the count <clears throat> and then this time i will now initialize it we'll now see whether the initialization takes place or not. and then click on complete now so it has to come with the item that's why what happens is not coming with the item actually the items are not enabled for cyclic counting and go there so click on it and then click on next now so it's count two now click on next now <clears throat> Dates fine, make it as automatic. The frequency is daily, and then go there. You must now populate my schedule itself now. P50, I'm going to put it now. So, P50 facility schedule, and go there. And today's date, I'm going to say it for doing it now. So, next schedule date, 
that's the word and you are numbering it the way approval is required and then <coughs> upload if out of tolerance and i'm going to get 10 percent on and then 10 percent and then 10 percent and go there and then it's all done now and go there <coughs> then afterwards <coughs> uh this is okay this series okay fine go there go to the next now the defined parameters i'm going to define the parameters now go there define parameters i'm defining it now go there it's now 1001 now and go there 1001 the maximum days before late is what two days the maximum break count is one now was and then the manual count is allowed and the count zero quantities as well as what happens the display suggestion quantity and go there and then it's a multiple per request now and go there and then adjust if possible is not there fine review all adjustments the one i'm going to go in now and go there so positive hit is what i'm not putting like the two percent now and, go there. <clears throat> and then a negative hit and miss is also one two percent and go there. okay and then uh, what happens the recount record count serials as well as what happens the serial discrepancy is allowed this much i'm giving it now so the moment i say what happens is the classes and items has to come now and go there so previously it was not coming on let's see whether it's not coming or not so click on save so the next tab which will be enabled now so click on next now and then here what happens i have to have the classes as well as items oh god here also it's not coming here some other mistake somewhere i'm making it i think i'm not sure about it maybe what happens after it is enabled items should have been created and then or there is there is something so otherwise what happens the items will normally come actually it is not that it won't be coming so p50 underscore cc1 and then give it tab now click on search now oh god it's still not coming item has been enabled for cyclic counting CC2, you <clears throat> That thing is coming here now. And let me add it now. And click on plus now. So click on plus. Here, what happens? I'll put the P50 and then give a tab now. It has to show, it is not showing all the three items. Okay. You cannot put it there, I think. This is not the correct way. Okay. So, not done now. So I will now include in the schedule now. If I go there, include in schedule. I'm not doing it now. So include in schedule is not done. If I go there, and now let's give a save now. A class. But this is not the correct way actually. And there is some mistake I'm making somewhere because of which what happens is not getting populated. Maybe the item creation itself was wrong in the beginning, and so what happens is it is not coming up. I don't know what exactly is not fine. When you do it, you ensure that what happens you are now enabling the what happens include in cycle counting as yes, and then afterwards create every item. And then do in a systematic fashion. Fine. There is some mistake. I've done it. So because of it's not done, go to the B, B class. In the B class, what happens? I'll give a plus now. Let me add the items over here now. Go there. P50 underscore CC2. And go there. The manual way of addition is not correct at all. Go there. So include in schedule. Get that mark. And then give a save now. And go there. B class is also done. And go there. I'll now go to the C class. CC3 now. So click on plus now. And then here go there and then see this now. Some or other, I don't love the interface at all. That interface is excellent actually. And then put a tick mark on this now. And that's it. And go there. So click on save. Because again, make a check of it now. I know that I know save and close and then come out of it and make a check of it now. All the items are there. So, the one. so let me delete this one. I know one. Delete this one. Can I delete this count? I go to the actions. Edit cycle count. I know put disable data or something like that. I want to delete this count actually. Nana, you're deleting two or one? Two. Oh, is that, is that two? Okay, keep it going. <laughs> But I have kept my cursor only on count one, na? Count one, and then I'm editing it now. Count one, okay, yeah. count one. And then uh, let me uh, disable this now. Fine, go there. Let me exclude from count. So that itself, what happens is now going to exclude it. See, <laughs> you cannot create the cycle count because of at least one sub inventory must be associated. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> How to put a disable date here? There is no disable date at all. Click on next now. Probably if I remove this date, I think probably it will not work. I do not want this to work actually. Fine, that is a, that is the idea basically. Oh God, you cannot do this. Oh God. 
outside also what happens we don't have any what happens uh, deletion uh, thing is there now just now actions delete is not there now ha <sighs> okay fine so count two is now ready well again make a edit and then i can check up this song and then the next 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 one the define classes and this thing i want to make a check now so this place we're going to make a check for a class has got this item b class has got cc2 and then c class has got cc2 okay now this is what i want to check now i'm going to cancel now we will not go to ebiz and then what happens we will not do this i'm going to go to the ebiz now so now what i do is the once when the count is set up what happens we have to perform three things now if you go to the tools what happens we will know what happens we have to schedule it and then what happens we have to generate the count sequences and then do the listing also fine listing also has to be done so for which what happens we are listing fine these are the three things which you have to do now so for which what happens we have one perform full cycle count this is not available in fusion so we have to do it manually there in fusion fine that facility is not there if you go to perform full cycle count in ebis what happens it will now run a request set actually it has got three things and then click on the parameters and launch the parameter and do that All cycle count is no, and then drop it down. We have got only one cycle count is no. Include control items for example. Normally control items are not included. I will not say yes once. I include control items. I know that. Get on okay. <clears throat> and then here go there. And then here what happens? No. And then I will not drop down. We have only one cycle count. And then get on okay. And then here what happens? The listing. You choose this one. I know that. We have got only one count. <clears throat> and then you don't do everything. Subunit is not required because what happens? There is only one subunit there. Display serial numbers is yes. No fine. Display on and on is yes. No. These two things are made as this, and then include all, and then we'll not run it. And then before run it, what happens? We'll not give a save now. It normally prints out it. Fine. If the printer is associated, it will be printing it now. Fine. You know what happens? I will not save it also. So once when you save it, you can even see here also. Here also we can see. And go there. Click on submit. By which what happens? The concurrence are not getting generated. So you go there, and then what happens? Have a look at the concurrent. So all the three concurrents will be running. Fine. This is the parent concurrent now. Fine. Go there. Perform for count. So it's spawning the child concurrent. So it will not spawn. So this is kind of a, what happens. A request set is not available in Fusion actually. If you go and go and see the listing, we all put what happens. You cannot see the listing for all the things. So this is the, the one, the first one. One thousand one is the sequence number for which what happens. CC one is not done. One thousand two for CC two for lot twenty, fine. Lot ten actually, and then afterwards lot twenty, and then uh, this is lot ten. This is lot twenty, and then finally the serial numbers. So what happens on the dotted line? What happens? We will now put a big scale. And then what happens? We'll not take it also as a slip actually. The parachies will be taken out. Then it will be taken cut. Right? We'll not put a big scale, and then we'll not cut all the parachies. And then we'll not give it to the people for counting. They will not go inside, and then they will not write whatever they have counted. And then what happens? They will not give it to the computer in charge who is sitting in the front of the cycle, the, in, the, in the inventory. So on in the evening, what happens? We'll not start the counting. And then what happens? We'll not make that many slips. Now, fine. Everything will be taken as a slip. And then it will be handed over to the inventory people who are going to go into counting. So they know the system quantity also. Fine. They will now count it, and then what happens? They know it. Some people will not show the system quantity at all. Fine. They will not display the system quantity, so that what happens? They will be absent as such. Well. So there is a way. Now we will see, but how it's being done in uh, Fusion now? Right? Mm -hmm. So the printing is ready. The counting is also ready now. So let us now go there, and then in Fusion now. So in Fusion, what happens if you go there? Go there. Click on it, and then here go to actions. And then there is no full cycle count is available here. We have to do one by one. So manage manual count schedules is okay. Fine. Generate count schedules is the one. This is not this is only with a manual one. I will not generate the count schedules. Fine. First of all, go there. So click on count schedules is I'm going to do it. Generate count schedules. Then afterwards generate count sequences. Now. Fine. These two things we have to do. It. Fine. Let us now go and then generate the count schedules for the second one. I am not giving it. And then go to actions. And then go to generate. What happens? Count schedules. So click on generate count schedules. So it will be generating the schedule. Fine. The six five two concurrent is not running. Fine, go there. And then have a look at it now. The concurrent will be running. So we have to run the, these concurrents manually only. I don't know why they have not given a full cycle count over there. Now, so go there. Click on it now. Fine. Go to the schedules and processes. Go there. The generate count schedules is not running. Fine, it's not successful. Now what happens? We go there, and then you go to the green circle. Go and go there. I will now select it, and then here what happens? We go there, and then go to the actions, and then here generate count schedules is now completed. What happens? Count sequences. I am going to generate. Fine. Click on generate count sequences. So that will not run another concurrent. Fine. Go there. Six five three is running. Fine. That will be running. Hmm. 
So once when it is completed, what happens? <coughs> is no completed. Then what happens for listing? We don't have any standard ones available here now. In this place, there is no listing at all. And if you go there, solitary. What happens? There is no listing at all. For listing, we don't have anything at all. So we have to run the listing only from the what happens? Schedule process basically. In the schedule process only we have to run it offline. Because we will not run it from the schedule process. Go there, go to this place, and then click on what schedule new process. Cyclic on listing is a separate one. Go there. Percentage cyclic percentage C O U N T count percentage L I S T percentage. Oh sorry. Uh, <coughs> and then click on search now. Cycle count listing and doing it on print. So this is on print cycle count listing report. Click on it and then click on OK now. So this has to be done over here now. Click on OK. Click on OK. Print cycle count listing report. So we will be printing it now. So go there. Organization is a P503. Give a tab now. Cycle count name is count 2 now. Continue the count 2. Uh, okay, fine. So I'll be not is okay. Then go down. Uh, show only receipt sequences. Fine, that is okay. Recount sequences, no. Fine. Display serial numbers, I will not say yes. No. Fine. Display on and quantity is yes. No. And then display exported sequences. Fine. Is not thing is export. Actually. And pass on these parameters. No. Fine. Go there. So click on submit now. Fine. Go there. So I will not do it. And then it will be submitting it. And then it will be printing it actually. So the printing is a separate concurrent. That too is now enabled from that place. Here, what happens is now coming as a separate one. So, if you go on and see the output of it, now can go there. Go on and see the output of it. Click on republish. <clears throat> Click on PDF now. And then I'll now save it. And then view the output. So it's almost like what we have in eBiz now, basically. Fine. On the perforations, what happens here? And again, the order is not different now. In EBIS, what happens? We are getting an order in a different manner. If you go on and see the EBIS now, and the cycle count listing, if you go on and view the output now, so you can now see the no control item is CC1 now. Fine. Afterwards, what happens? A lot 10 is CC2, and then lot 20 is CC3, and then what happens? Single control is CC4 now. But here it's coming differently. Fine. The lot 10 is 1001, lot 20 is 1001. I don't know why it's so. And just Tushar, make an R&D on this. Not fine. How to organize it? Uh, I heard that what happens? Uh, the, what happens? Uh, you can even choose the first as a lot control item. Then afterwards, no control item. Then serial control. Item. What happens? You can even what happens? Is schedule. So how to do this? Uh, I don't know where exactly it's been done. So one one thousand one is lot ten. One thousand two is lot twenty. Fine. One thousand three is no control item, and then one thousand four is a serial control item. All the three serial controls. So Tushar, try to make an R&D on this. Tushar and Thomas. What happens? I try to make an R&D and then see what, how we can do the rearranging of this. What happens? Allocation of the sequence numbers to this. Got it? Sure. Now. Okay. Try and then if you are getting it, what happens? Please inform me so that what happens? I will know. Uh, inform all the participants basically on this. <coughs> okay. Fine. Good. So that's on this one. Fine. Count is now ready. Now we'll now go and then do the counting in uh, what happens in EBIS now first. We'll now go to the EBIS and then do the counting now. Fine. Go there. Go there. Go there. <coughs> So here, what happens? Uh, uh, the recount is what if you see in this place. What happens is now you are given what out of tolerance now. Ten percent is out of tolerance. <coughs> so if it is within the tolerance, it will now get adjusted. It will now within tolerance. What happens? It is going to get adjusted. Fine. If it is beyond the tolerance, it will be sent to the uh, counter for counting. So let us now see this. So we will now go the entry. I will now go to the cycle count entries. The area where what happens? The person is now entering the data into the system. Fine. Cycle count entries. They are going over there. And then I will now put the cycle count over here now. Find P50 and then give a tab. And then click on find now. It will show all the counts over here now. Click all open counts only. Fine. I will not say no. Let it display everything. Fine. Open counts. Oh God. Oh, okay. Open count is busy. Yes, we are doing it. Okay. Click on it. Okay. These are the four ones. Yep. So this is the one. No, no. Fine. Go there. The count sequences. And then what happens? It will not show that. Just use this. Now count quantity. 51, I am going to count as 47 now. For the one more on what? It is now less than 10%. Now. 
fine. The error is less than 10 percent. It will not get adjusted. So two, I'm going to count as two, three now, and then three, I'm going to count as four now. This is now more than 10 percent actually. Fine. It is now almost 50 percent actually. Error is 50 percent. Here also, what happens? More of error. More of error. So what happens? This will be sent for recount actually. They will be sent for recount. And then the three, what happens? I'm counting as two. And then since it is a serialized item, what happens? We have to mention the serial number also. Fine. Go there. Which serial number is missing? I have to say. Click on the serial number. And then here I'm mentioning that what happens? The present in the uh, system we cannot modify. Whatever is present, we are modifying. So one and two is missing actually. And click on done. So three, one is missing, and then there is no shown over here. Now, if you see what happens, this will be adjusted actually. What 51 will be adjusted to 47, whereas the two and three, which is now counted as three and four, will be sent for recount actually. And then this will be what happens. We'll now see what happens to this. We have seen that review all adjustments. That is what we are given as far as serial number is concerned. And so what happens? It has to go to the inventory in charge for taking his decision actually. And then what happens? You know, give a save. And go there, give a save. And go save. So you can now see counter this commit. What happens? You can now see an error occurred while processing adjustment transactions. So please contact the system and Because it's not trying to adjust this transactions now. What happens? No, we need error. What are the error on this? Oh God. <clears throat> if you go for 45, what happens? It will not go for uh, uh, recount actually because no more than 10% of the time. Just commit. So transaction is complete, but it's not causing any adjustments actually. Uh, I don't know what are the error now. Okay? Uh, we will not see whether there's any periods is open or not. Go and click on it. So now the periods must be open. Accounting close, it will inventory accounting periods. So May is open. Oh, we are in June. Oh God. <laughs> that is the reason. <laughs> So we were in June. What happens? I had to open this. Now, in the May, in May, what happens? I made it, and then what happens? I had to change status. I had to make June as open. Fine. Go there. I have to now open the period now. So June is not open now, and I had to open the period. Fine. Change status. Open the period. Fine. Go there. I had to open the period. So that may be the reason. The period is not open, so that is not not doing it. Now. Go there. And then let us now go on and make a change of this. What is the one now? Fine. Now see. What is the one? Now? I cannot make a change. Now. So it has already been sent to recount now. Fine with that. So June must be open now. Fine. Fortunately, we don't have any periods in Fusion at all. Fine. Fusion is not having any period. Fine with that. Got it now. Fine. Tushar and Thomas. So I made a mistake because of which what happens? Forty seven is not getting processed as such. Had I then what happens? Well, processed actually. Now we'll now go there. It's now saved actually. Fine. Close. And now what happens? We'll now go to the what happens? We will now go for approvals actually. Fine with that. We'll now go to the approvals. Go to the counting and then go to the cycle counting and then what happens? Approve counts. We'll go to the approve counts. Fine. Double on it. And then we'll now put the count now or find the P50 and then give it a tab now. And then click on find now. So click on yes now. So it's only showing only things. Fine. The CC1 is the only thing which is now come for approval or something like that. And then click on find now and now say no, you know, show everything. So here what happens? It is in the none status actually. Fine. The remaining have all gone for recount now. See, CC2, CC2, these two things have gone for recount. This is now also gone for recount. So this is in a none status actually. So let me send it for recount actually. Let me send it for recount. I can even make a change and then send it to recount. So now everything has now gone for a recount. And remember, the maximum recount is only one. The maximum recount is only one. I click on close now. The maximum recount. Now I'll now go to the cycle count entries now. I go to the cycle count entries. And then let me query the entry now. I go to the POT and then you tab now. I click on find now. So I'll now say find all open counts. Yes, now find all the four would have come. Go there, click on adjustments. Now 45 was counted. Fine. I will again enter 45 over here. Fine. I will again enter 45. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, but if you enter 45, what happens? It will go for approval actually. And if you enter 47, what happens? It will be getting processed actually. It will be getting processed. Because what happens if it is 47, it is less than 10%. What happens? It will be just processed. If it is 45, what happens? It will now go to the inventory in charge for his approval. I will again say this is 3 and this is 4 now. Fine. Go there. This is two now. The same thing I'm doing again. So here only I make a change now. Fine. Click on it. I will not put what happens. This is now missing. One not two is missing. Click on done. So when I commit, what happens? The adjustment has to be processed. The remaining three will not go for a recount because the maximum recount is only one. And so what happens? It will now go to the inventory in charge for his approval actually. Clear? Anybody? Tushar and Thomas, are you clear on this now? This will be adjusted. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let's commit. What happens? You can now see adjustments are processed. The adjustments are processed only for the first line now and not for the remaining three. 
The remaining three, the same errors that it is more than 10% and what happens, it will be going for a V count actually. It will be going for a V count. So this here adjustment is processed. Because what happens, no, it will never go for a, uh, let's say, go there. We'll now have a look at the on-end now. Go, go to the on-end availability and then go to the on-end quantity and then click on find now. So once when you find it out, what happens, you can now see that these are the quantities which are there now. <clears throat> so it is 47, 5 and 3. It was initially 51 and 5 and 3. Now what happens, it has now become 47, 5 and 3. So these two things have gone for approval actually. This has got processed because it's no less than 10%. What happens is not gone. So the last time also it got processed, but what happens? Uh, we are not open the period because of it it did not happen. Otherwise, what happens? It will not process the last time itself would have got processed. Now what happens? You go to the counting and then it is not done. Now you go to the counting and then you go to the second counting and then go to the approved counts. So in the approved counts, if you go and then see this now fine, go to the PMT. Now the three of the counts would have come to him for reapproval. I will not say no, no. So whatever is not done, fine. It is approved actually. CC1 is already approved, is gone. So these things are none status actually. And then if you see the count status, what happens? It is not pending approval actually. Previously, what happens? Nonso has what gone for recount actually. It is not pending approval. So now the inventory in charge has to take a decision. It has now gone for a maximum of one recount. And now also what happens? The error is existing. So go there, go to the count, and you can now see the count results actually. So is two is now counted as three, three is counted as four, and then now it's two, fine. Now you can even see what are the what's called there are so many tab regions of that item details, item location fine. What are the adjustment quantity? How much is got adjusted? Minus four is adjusted here, minus one, plus one, here plus one, plus one, here one serial number is missing. So now on seeing all these results, what happens? He has to take a decision whether to approve or not. Right. The person he has counted, whether he is now saying, okay, whatever he has counted must be correct. So he has to take a decision. So let us now approve all and go to the approvals, approve and then approve. So he's taking a decision of approval and then he will now submit. So upon committing, what happens? The adjustments will now get processed. And God bless commit. The adjustments will be processed. Adjustments are processed. And go there. They're not done. And close it now. Now what happens? You can now see the results over here. And go, there. go to the on-end availability, on-end quantity. And then if you see this, what happens? You can now see all the results. So 57 has already been processed to 47. Fine. Now what happens? The 2 on 2 plus 3 was 5. Now it has now become 3 plus 4 is 7. Now it is processed. And then 3, 1 is missing. It's not this completes cyclic counting in EBIS now. Fine. Any doubts on this? We will not do the counting in Fusion. Tushar and Thomas are you on? Yeah. Good. Fine. That's fine. Now we will not see the cyclic counting in Fusion. Now. We will now go to the Fusion and then do the cyclic counting. So let us now close it. Fine. We will now this one. I will now close it. I will now go to the cycle count area and go there. Go on. So, since the maximum count is given as only one, yeah. uh, there is no other option for the uh, in charge other than to approve, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Only inventory in charge will be having. Here, what happens? Uh, this is the one. So, here, what happens? Inventory in charge will be having this navigation now. If you go to the counting, if you go to the cycle counting, only he will have the approve counts navigation. Others will not be having it. The man who is making an entry, what happens? He will not have the approve counts at all. So through what happens, this has been, what happens that we can exclude this function. You know about how to exclude it, no? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question what I'm trying to ask is, he will not be, he, in this case, in the scenario what you discussed, yeah. he does not have an option of uh, asking for one more recount, right? Because the maximum... Yeah, 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 he can do that now. Fine, that is what, he, he can very well do it. Here, what happens, uh, instead of approving it, he can even send it for recount, actually. Oh, is it? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. He can even send it for recount also. Fine, go there. No, By no default, maximum... what happens, it does not come to him now. So by default, it has come to him, he has approved it. And then it was none now. Fine. What happens? Instead of approval, he can even send it for recount also. He will not push it for recount, it will not go to the recount. What is the essence that is already passes is not coming? Otherwise, what happens? Instead of approval, he will not send it for recount also again. He can send for any number of recounts again and again. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. He has got the facility of what happens, sending it for recount in again and again. But by default, what happens? It is only one one time. So what happens? You count one more time, and then if you are getting the same results, okay, fine. Doesn't matter. It must be correct. Because the counters um, are all uneducated people. So while they are counting, they may make mistakes. That is why what happens, it has been sent to the inventory in charge for his concurrence actually. Okay. Got it now, fine. Click on it, fine. Now we'll now see in Fusion, find how the counting takes place. Now here, what happens, you select it, and then here, what happens, you go to the actions now, fine. Uh, you go to the actions now. And then here, what happens? I have to do the count entries actually. Fine. Record count sequences. This is the one. So, 
uh, record pre approved consequence this is the one i think right record consequences i'm going to write. click on the record consequences and go there i'm going to select it and i'm going to go there so in this area what happens he is now going to put the phone quantity fine here uh, 1001 is cc2 uh, of a uh, lot 10 now lot 10 is not shown over here now lot 10 and lot 20 whether view and then uh, uh, columns and then add columns you must see whether you can use that manage columns i want to have the lot entries also there now only this many are missing actually fine category name secondary count quantity additional information there is no lot column at all fine these are all bugs actually serial number required is okay that's okay uh, but uh, lot numbers also must be available now fine lot also can be counted actually pata nahi hai fine thomas and uh, tushar please make a check of it but how to show the lot number somewhere here now fine must be available and i am not really very much convinced with the fusion now <coughs> or no fine because what about the particular lot also yes to say now fine the man who is entering on the system uh, even though on the print result is there now you just see the print print was there now and we have seen it now and it was not showing the lot numbers also i will not show you that now in the print what happens you cannot see this now fine whether if you go and then see the listing report fine if you go there republish it now fine there it is available but for the computer operator also what happens it must be available what happens so here uh, we have done this now so let me close this and make it right ah. close it now not this one oh sorry cancel so this one yeah if i close it then only what happens you know view it again you can go there so in this place what happens if it can't resubmit so not resubmit oh god can no <laughs> i have to go and then see the republish now click on republish now so click on it and then export to pdf now yes i did done it actually <clears throat> if you see this now here what happens you are able to see that uh, what happens a lot number now on the print this is a slip carried by the man who is going into the inventory for counting actually this is a slip he is having so he is now going to write this to as 3 now on this slip right the count quantity somewhere will be there count quantity is now going to write as 3 in the manual but on the system entry also what happens 1001 should also show me the lot number na that is not showing i thought that they thought there is a excess one they are simplifying simplifying and then what happens so much of a simplification has taken place now here <laughs> so here what happens then normal i will not say 2 as 3 now and then the 3 is now enter as 4 if this is the one which is available then we have to leave with it now otherwise what happens you try to find out about how to list down the lot numbers also uh, click, click, click that arrow nana this one ha huh? no no not that uh, towards the next to 101 there is a arrow right details kind of 101 1001 1001 there is a arrow right oh, this arrow wow okay okay fine expand it okay fine yeah here ah oh, yeah 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 very correct thomas is very correct now so if you expand the arrow it is not showing you yeah, very good but that should be available on the main screen no huh? good 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 <laughs> okay good this guy is a really a very excellent guy fan god uh, just keep you as thomas as a friend of yours he will be very helpful for you in your implementation problems fine right? good that's fine so if you expand it it is not showing okay good <laughs> that should be available on the main screen is it okay somewhere the column has to be added. now this is what happens cc1 and then i here what happens i am now going to make it as what 47 now so 47 so in eb is what happens if it is within the tolerance it gets adjusted here you will not see what happens and then this is the one here i will not put two numbers over here now i go the two numbers and then here it says what serial number information is required actually fine uh, and then where to enter the serial number here go there serial number entry counted by something like that i had expanded and then see this one no see that we are entering inside the account it also is not there so oh, now you see now it's coming the moment i put two what happens it say remaining is two fine that is coming actually previously it was required as coming so the moment i put the number as two what happens is now coming as a remaining with the hyperlink now i click on the hyperlink and then i will say which is missing actually then go there and then go down i will not say what happens the is now thing when i will not say in the present in the system i cannot pick only the reconfine go there i will not say this is available fine go there so you know giving a graphical also Click on it now. It says what hundred percent. 
these are all unnecessary fine so many uh, so the 1202 is now missing now can go there so a graphical representation also made thank you once even closed so now upon commit upon submitting it what happens we'll not see whether the 51 is processed as 47 or not because the remaining are all beyond the tolerance limits three and four are beyond tolerance. this is also beyond tolerance limits this is well within the tolerance limit we'll not see whether it is at this point thank you can submit now we are going to submit it now we are submitting it. Number of count sequences marked for recount is four. Everything is going for recount. This is a good one. Actually, what happens in EBIS? If 51 is counted as 47, if it is well within the tolerance, it gets adjusted. That is not correct, actually. In EBIS, if you see, it is not correct. Because what happens? If there is a problem in the area, what happens? It has to go for a recount. And the recount, again, what happens if you are getting the results? Then only you should process now. But, but what happens in EBIS? It processes the adjustment immediately if it is within the tolerance. So that is now corrected nicely. Fine. They have corrected it nicely in Fusion now. Fine. So are you able to understand Thomas and Tushar <clears throat> this part? Fine. It is now everything has gone for a recount. Whereas in EBIS, the 51, if you are correcting, if you are marking it as part of the one, it gets adjusted immediately on the first count itself. It will not go for a recount at all. I have not shown it because what happened? The period was not open there. So it was also throwing an error, remember, that what happens is unable to do it because the period is not open. But it gets processed and that is not correct. Clear, Tushar? Thomas, yeah, no, no, yeah, good. good, fine. So this is now nicely adjusted now, right? This is now nicely adjusted. Fine. Click on OK now, fine. No, no. Now it has gone for recount now. Fine. Now we'll now go on and have a look at this uh, stock also. You know, see whether the stock has got anything has got adjusted or not. We'll go there. I will now go to the warehouse operations and go to the inventory and then see whether the stock is adjusted or not. It should not have been adjusted right? because everything has gone for a recount. And so what happens? The stock should not have been adjusted. And the P one zero three fine. Click on search now. It has to show us fifty one five one three now. So 51513 is coming correctly. Now let us now recount it now. If I go that, let us now go and do the recounting. Click on it, select it, then go to the actions, and then here what happens? You go and then record the count, record the count sequences. <coughs> record count sequences. I don't know what exactly is now. Record pre-approved count sequences down there. I don't know what exactly is. So click on the record count sequences. I will again go there. So this time what happens? You now go there and see this now. <coughs> now enter the same results now. So 1001, the two is now entered as three now. Three is entered as four now. And then here, what happens is now again, I will now say what is the one. This time it has to adjust. And go there. And then this is now two now. The moment I put a two, what happens? The required becomes remaining now. Fine, go the two. And then if you click on it, what happens? It becomes the remaining now. If I click on the remaining. And then I will now say what happens? How much is there? Fine, go there. I'm now entering the same results now. Fine, go there. Click on it. The 1002, 102 is missing now. Fine, go there. Seven close now. So let me submit it. So when they submit it, what happens? Three of them has to go for approval. One has to be processed. Got it now? This, this, this one has to go for approval and then this has to be processed. I click on submit now and see what is the results. I click on submit. So we are submitting it now. Fine, go there. You can now see number of count sequences processed is one and the number of count sequences submitted for approval is three. Fantastic. Clear, Tushar and uh, Thomas. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Fine, good. So it has now gone for approval now. Fine, click on OK. Now he is going to approve it now. I click on OK now. <coughs> go there. So after having done this, what happens? You go to the actions and then here what happens? You go to approve ones. So in Fusion, the one advantage is that what? The task you have to perform is now coming one by one. That is a good advantage when compared to EBIS. Now. EBIS, what happens? You only have to go here and there and all. Here you need not have to search. First of all, create it, edit it, and then if you require, you purge it. And then if anything is required, you do it. Otherwise, what happens? You go to the next, next, next steps. Like this. And this is advantage in Fusion. And then I don't know what exactly is record pre approved counts and sequences. Fine, you just uh, find some, more, uh, some of you please understand what exactly is now. You go through the document, document will be explaining a lot now. Now, what happens? You have to go and then finally approve the counts. So, this way, what happens? It is better than EBIS, but some functionality. What happens? Uh, uh, and I think I'm not, I'm making a mistake on the classes and items now. Fine, that is not possible manually. In reality, what happens? A class will be having plenty of items and thousands of items. You cannot add it manually. So when you're doing it, what happens? You please modify the template with what? With the cycle count enabled as yes, and then afterwards create the item. Clear on. And then I do everything systematically so that once when you initialize with the ABC class, with the complete, what happens? It has to show all the classes and items also. Got it, Tushar and Thomas? Fine. You make an experiment. And then if you're succeeding with me, please write to me that what happens? The classes and items are coming. Okay? Sure. Click on approve counts now. We go for the final activity of approve counts. We go to click on approve counts. And then here, what happens? You now go to approve it. Fine. Here, it's saying what? CC2. Fine. Pending approval. All the things are pending approval. 
So here I will now select it, select the line, and either approve or reject, or I can even set it for recount also. So all the portions are possible. So I will now select it and click on approve. And click on approve. So the status will now change to approve. Approved but not submitted now. We get a submitted file. You know, it will be so it's not, I can even give a reason for this now. Fine. We have got, we have now created oh, so many reasons now. Fine. Accordingly, what happens in the reasons area, you can even create your own reasons area. And then populate it. Fine. Some reasons you can write for cycle counting. So the same navigation which you have seen in the beginning, what happens they do? Select it and then click on it and then click on approve. Now. <clears throat> so click on approve. So that is now getting approved now. And then third also, what happens? I select and then click on approve. So what happens? Approved, not submitted. So if you go and then see the quantity now, fine, go there. If you go and then have a look at the quantity, <clears throat> the quantity will be the same one. If I go there and then research for it now, because it's not at approved. 51, 47513. 47 is approved. 47 is currently processed now. 47513. So now let us go there and then what happens? We approve. Now. We have selected for approval and then change the approval. Now. We can even send it for recount also. It is almost similar to what we have in here. So click on submit upon which what happens? It gets processed. The approved approval process completed and then the adjustments are processed by number of what happens consequences approved is three. So it's all very good. Fine, go there. Now go there, then have a look at it now. Fine, go there. And then click on search. Click on search now. <clears throat> it's four is one and then seven and two. This completes cyclic counting in fusion actually. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, very good, very good. Now we'll now go on and see the physical inventory in uh, EBIS now. And we'll now go on and have a look at the physical inventory in EBIS now. So we'll now have a look at the physical inventory in EBIS now. <clears throat> or shall we continue tomorrow? <laughs> because again, it's a big process. I will, not, I will not be able to complete in time. Tomorrow, man. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> okay, tomorrow. Okay, then, yeah. So we'll not do the physical inventory tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll be having a tough topic now. Fine. Now, apart from physical inventory, what happens? We'll be having a tough topic of what units of measures basically. We'll not take up the units of measures also. It's a very tough topic. And then uh, <coughs> we will now do that. <clears throat> so okay, fine. Good. So one exercise is what the classes and items has to come now. Fine. When you're creating it, what happens? You ensure that the template is now having uh, the cycle count enabled as yes. And then afterwards create the item and then afterwards do the ABC analysis and then do everything as per that now. So maybe that may solve the problem, I think. That's what I think. Because I was manually adding it and that is not the correct thing. And I don't think what happened, that may be my mistake, I think. I don't think the system will not have a mistake. Also. So good then, and then we'll now meet tomorrow and then we'll now begin with the physical inventory. Bye now. Bye now. So the recording has started <clears throat> and then if by any chance, if it goes away, what happens is some of me will be, some of them will be informing me because in one of the sessions, what happens is that the recording by mistake has stopped it. Uh, so what happens, you just keep a watch of this. No point, go there. So welcome back all of you to the next day session on the Fusion Inventory and then Fusion uh, Shipping Implementation. So let me go there. And then Rajesh is a new joinee now. So here, uh, what I have done is, uh, I initially created what an enterprise structure actually. So when a complete enterprise structure has been created right from uh, ledger, legal entity, chart of accounts, everything has been created now. So this is uh, basically from scratch actually. So I did an implementation project and then I assigned the roles and then I configure offerings and then what is an implementation project and then how the enterprise has been structured. Then I create the locations. Then the legal jurisdictions have been made now and then afterwards the legal authority, legal interest <coughs> and then legal entity. And then afterwards the legal entity had same information is the important one. Here, what happens? One uh, uh, Uma uh, for a patch. What happens? Uh, she got stuck actually. Fine. She is anybody who created an employee. Because what happens? If you don't give, provide the LDG, fine. The uh, legislative program, what happens? You'll not be able to do it actually. Fine. She uh, forgot other than that. She referred the meta link and then afterwards she solved the problem. But what happens? It's all there in my thing. And then go through and then take notes. If you take notes, what happens? You'll not be finding any difficulty at all. There's no fine. And then I create the accounting calendars. Not, and then afterwards, what happens? The startup account structures. <coughs> With which what happens i created what happens the four natural accounts for this not training i know that so i have now created four such natural accounts for this one and then uh, with which we did it now then i create the primary ledger <coughs> then out of the specific ledger options has been done as a legal industry ledger and the balancing segments have been done and if i I'll review them submitted it so what happens the skilled and financial structure is in place and so what happens on that only we are all working on it now 
uh, towards we open the period and then we create the business units and then the assigned business unit business function has been done now. <coughs> So go there and then afterwards what happens? The set assignments have been done now. So <coughs> the reference data set. <coughs> then afterwards, I go on there. I created the jobs, the departments, positions, <coughs> and then employment have been created now. And then afterwards, I given a lot of roles for them now. Right? So many roles I've given. But in fact, what happens? I explained each and everything about what the roles are going to do now. Uh, in reality, what happens? You'll be giving roles only whatever is required for your people. And then afterwards, again, I want to go on down. <coughs> then afterwards. I created the, uh, what happens, the inventory activity, fine. what is exactly an item org and then what is an inventory org I explained and then afterwards the facility work day patterns, schedules and then org creation and then what happens, I take the location to org and then afterwards sub inventories are created then manage carriers and transit times is required for transfer orders actually, a very important one. So if the transit time is not specified, what happens, you will not be able to perform the transfer orders as it's no fine with that. Then the data access has been reduced new as far as release rule is concerned, so that has been explained over there now. And then afterwards, the life cycle phases and then transaction reasons and then costing setup has been done now. So we need a costing setup and then what happens, we costed a product because item, if it is not costed, transfer orders are going to fail now actually. And then afterwards, I did it and then I was not pushing into the costing for costing transaction. Then afterwards, the procurement setups have been done now, right? Some basic procurement setups have been done now. And then afterwards, I did and then I gone to the inventory controls now. So there are five controls over there. Serial control, lot control, revision control, locator control, and then middle status control, all these things have been displayed. And then afterwards, what I gone to the transfers now. So I made a miscellaneous result and issue and then transaction source and pipe and then I found realized transfers. Then the moment request, which is equal to move order of the US, and then out of the ITD. And then afterwards, the intro transfers direct and in transit have been done. And then afterwards, they go there. Then the replenishments are begin now, and only one replenishment technique has come now. Min max has been done now. So min max at the sub middle level sourcing, and then the what happens sub supply level sourcing as well as org level sourcing, everything have been done. And then I want to the shipping, and then I have created the release sequence rule, the big slip grouping rule, the release rule, as well as what happens the other ones. The uh, then uh, what happens? There are four ways of uh, PRing. So we discussed about it, and then finally what happens? We created all these rules in the fusion, and then uh, uh, we did the pick wave move order, and then moment request everything has been done now. So by what happens? The min max planning has been completed now. Then afterwards, the remaining replenishment techniques have been explained only in E is now fine. They're ready to come now. The reorder point planning, Kanban, and then replenishment counting, and then the periodic order planning replenishments. They have been explained in uh, EBIS. And then as soon as it comes in fusion, I will now make another separate video and then I will now send it to you. And then again, I'm requesting all the people what happens whenever they find that it is now come in release 13. Fine, please send me the document or whatever it is. Fine. Yeah, and then I will now go through that and I will now practice and I will now make a video record for all this uh, replenishment techniques. Actually. Now we are into inventory accuracy. We have completed the ABC analysis as well as cyclic counting. Now we are into physical inventory. Okay, fine. With this, we are not over there. So we are into this place now. Uh, good. So, Tushar is it to come? Anita is also it to come. No, fine. Well, that's not what to do. I cannot do <laughs> So, they are really very active participants. No, fine. So, are you with Tushar? And then, uh, uh, what Thomas, <clears throat> they are all really very active. No? Uh, so, we'll now see this. Fine. We'll now go and then see the physical inventory. So, cyclic counting is now done periodically to establish the inventory accuracy. No, fine. The actual, what happens, the system quantity may not match the actual quantity. Whereas physical inventory is not like that. Physical inventory is the one where what happens, uh, the, it is an audit requirement. At the end of the year, what happens, uh, audit has to sign your balance sheet. The balance sheet you would have written, the, what happens, uh, the land is worth of this much of money. The building is this much of money. The missionaries is worth of this much of money. Then what happens, the audit can very easily make a scrutinization. Okay, There is a two boiler and then one turbine. They can very easily count. Right? And then they can say, okay, take tick mark, tick mark. They will not put it. But what happens as far as inventory stock is concerned, you will now say around 50 crore rupees worth of what happens inventory is there in your inventory. So that has to be counted. So only when you count what happens, the uh, the thing which you are projecting on your balance sheet will be approved by the audit actually. This is an external auditor. So the external auditor has to approve it for which what happens, you will not perform it once in a year or otherwise if you are doing your what happens the balance sheets and then you are now reporting to the government twice, then what happens it will be done twice a year. So physical inventory is an audit requirement actually. So for which what happens is they will now make a verification of this now. So let us go first of all and see about how it's being done in uh, EBS now and go there. So I will not change the organization now and go there. I will not change the organization to what happens here, P503. And then I will now go and have a look at the online quantity now and go there, leveling on it. <clears throat> then I click on find now. So before which what happens, you will now see what exactly has been done in this place now and go there. So if you go to the fusion inventory, and then put the EBIS documentation. So we have got uh, what happens, uh, there are four types of documentation have been given to you. One is the inventory, one is the manufacturing, one is the OEM purchasing. So in the inventory, if you go there and then go to the day five. So if you go to the day five of the uh, EBIS now, and go there, you know how the bottom, what happens, the reasons for cyclic counting is there. 
So what we have created everything on this now. Fine, go there. So in this place, what happens? We have now created what happens? Three items. Fine. CC one of fifty one quantities, and then CC two of a lot ten of two quantities, and then CC two the same. And what about lot twenty of three quantities, and then CC three is now one of five, one of one of three items. So we have fifty one plus five plus three are the quantities. So during cyclic counting process, what happens? I have counted two as three, and then two as three as four now. So these are things which are done now. Fine. Three is now counted as four, and then two is counted as three. So two plus three has now become three plus four. So we have seven on the CZ two now. And go and have a look at it now. Fine. We have seven on CZ two. <coughs> so we have seven on CZ two. Fine. CZ two is now having seven quantities now. And go there. So this is one. So uh, item is not explaining. I don't know why it's not coming. Fine. Go there. So it's a CZ two is seven, and then this one has been what happens. The serial number one not two is missing now. So one not one, what the one not three is only there. So we have two serial numbers. So on which what happens? We are now going to perform what? Yeah, uh, what's called the uh, physical inventory now. Fine. So forty seven seven and two are the balances now. Fine. On which what happens? We'll now create a physical inventory. We close it now. We'll now go and get a physical inventory. You go there, go to the steps. <clears throat> no, sorry. I'll now go to the what happens? Counting. And then I go to the physical inventory, and then go to the physical inventories. <laughs> fine. Counting physical inventory, physical inventory is navigation. Fine. So let me go on and create a physical inventory now. Click on it. So let me create a physical inventory. <laughs> so we'll be creating a physical inventory of this now. So let us now create a new physical inventory. Cyclic counting creation is very tough, whereas doing is easy. Here it is ultra. Here what happens? The creation is easy, but doing is very tough. Click on new now. So I'll now create a new physical inventory. Go there. I will now say P50 underscore. Uh, Rajesh, you can take up a prefix of what or as a RA or something like that because what happens? I have now allocated some prefixes for others now. So since you join late, what happens? Whatever uh, two-letter prefix you feel like, what happens? You can take it up and then you can start. I can say you can say RA. Nobody would have taken RA. Otherwise, you just see if somebody has taken it. What happens? You, you choose one of the prefixes for your, all your lab practice. Lab practice is doing. So I'll now say physical inventory. Fine. P H Y underscore I N V. What else? So take a copy of it now. <clears throat> and then click on the description and then paste it. And go there and then paste it. And go there. Here, what happens since audit is repaired? What happens? You normally cannot have what happens out of tolerance. If it is out of tolerance, what happens? It will not get automatically adjusted. Fine. Normally, it will not be allowed. Fine. Audit will not say bring everything to me. Fine. Approval is always required. Even if one is missing, he has to approve it. That is how this is not done. And then you'll be doing it for all the subunits. And then uh, so only in rare cases, what happens? You'll not go for a specific subunit. Otherwise, what happens? You'll not go for all the Control is commit by which what happens? The physical inventory is created. So creation is so easy. Whereas in cyclic counting, you'll see that what happens is so much of a problem is there while you are creating it now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> what else? So now what happens in order? Now what happens? We have to take a snapshot. Now. Snapshot means what? You are going to freeze the physical inventory. Fine. The physical inventory gets freezed now. Fine, we have to freeze it because once when a snapshot is taken, what happens? Sir? No transactions are basically allowed because audit is sitting and then they are not going to count it. It will not take around two days or three days also sometimes, right? Because what happens? The physical inventory is now getting done. So during this period, what happens? You cannot perform any transactions. So what happens? Oracle feels that what happens? Freezing a real inventory will be very very tough because what happens? Your production will be hampered basically. So what they do is they will only logically freeze. If the audit insists that what happens? No transaction to be allowed. Then what happens? They will also physically also freeze. Right? So we will not. Uh, run the physical uh, inventory. Fine. Click on snapshot. So once in a snapshot, what happens? The concurrent 528 is now running, and then you can now have a look at it. Now, fine, go there. If you have a look at it, so the concurrent is now going to run. It is basically called what happens? A freezing of the inventory actually, but actually what happens? Really, the, the inventory is not freezed. Fine, not done. So it is only a logical freezing. No physical freezing. You are allowed all transactions. But if the audit insists that what happens? It has to be really freezed. Then what happens? The technical team has to remove. That has been commented out. Fine. All the transaction stopping has been commented out by Oracle actually. So uh, what happens? It allows, but if audit says no, well, what happens? The comment will be removed and then everything will be freezed actually. Sometimes what happens? You give a big bribe to the uh, auditor. What happens? You will not say okay, yeah, fine, chala, fine, whatever you want, you do it. And then that way, what happens? You will do it now. So close it now, <clears throat> and then we'll now requery. So once when you requery, what happens? It will now say snapshot is completed, and then what happens? The tags will be ready for what happens? The process. I go to the query mode. And then I paste it now and go to the requery it now. In the requery, what happens? You can now see the snapshot is completed. The date of completion is now fine. The tags are ready for clarification. So here, what happens? Unlike your uh, cyclic counting here, what happens? You will now allocate one tag for the what happens? No control item, and then one tag for every lot, and then one tag for every serial number actually. 
in the cyclic counting, what happens? Uh, multiple serial numbers have been clubbed together in one tag. Where it is not possible. Fine. Each individual serial number will be given one tag. So you'll be having one here, and then two, three, and then four and five. So the system will be getting five tags actually. So what happens? Click on the tags now. I'm not going to create a tag now. Click on it. I will not say starting tag number. I will not say 2001 now. Give a tap. So what happens? It now the final tag is 2005. So we can even have digit increments as per requirement. Some companies will not see if you have an odd number. What happens? You will be getting what happens? Some superstition will be there. So they would not like to have an odd number. So they will not start with 2002 and then what happens? They will not increment the last digit with two two numbers. So if you do that, what happens? It will be 2002, 2004, 2006, 2002, 2008. So there will not be any odd numbers. Everything will be even numbers now. So you have the option of what generating the tag numbers in whichever way you want. Fine. We can even increment any digits as well as you require. And then click on generate by which what happened the, the tags are getting generated now. Fine for that. So now 2001 to 2005 is now generated. Now go to perform a count. Now. So close it now. <coughs> you will now do what happens tag counts. So go there and then perform the tag counts over here now. Fine. Double click on it. So we are now performing the tag counts now. <coughs> All right, Thomas has arrived. <coughs> Come on, Thomas, where we are? You're late now. <laughs> Okay, tag counts. Fine, double click on it. So we are now going to perform the tag count now. Fine, double click on it now. So here, what happens? I will now put the uh, count over here and then click on find now. I'm going to find it out. So once when I find it out, what happens? Put all existing tags. Yes, now. So now we are able to see all these things now. Fine, CC1 is now there. And then for which, what happens? You now see the quantity. And remember, uh, you cannot show the system quantity to the counters at all because audit is sitting. Since audit is sitting before the inventory, what happens if we cannot show it? So the person who has to count, he cannot see the system quantity at all. Fine, that is not bad. Fine, go there. Click on the detail now. This place, what happens? You know, see this is the one. So what happens? He has to enter whatever he has counted. So 47. Let us say he is now entering at 45. 45. Here, what happens? This is now what happens? The first lot. Fine, go there. You can see them. What happens is lot 10, lot 20. So lot 10 is now having three quantities. This is having four quantities. Let us say we are now counting it as what? As four and five. So three and four is now counted as four and five now. Four and five. Go there and, there. and these are all serial numbers. Fine. CC3 is a serial number. So this is a one not one serial number. Here one. This is a one not one serial number. This is a one not one not three serial number now. Fine. Go there. This is a one. So I will now say one not one is present, but one not three is absent. And like what happens, there are like plenty of tags. Sometimes what it will now say what happens is no need to count. What happens? We can even void some of them. Can even void something or what happens? We can even void all and then unvoid all with these two buttons. What happens? You can now choose whatever you want to count actually. Fine. So, there are two combinations by which whatever you can do it now. Fine. So, it all depends upon how fast you want to do it now. Fine. So, if you say no void all, everything has to be counted. And then, upon what happens, you entry the count, what happens? No adjustments are basically processed. Fine. Calculus commit. Fine. You know, the transaction is complete. So, the physical inventory is now made, the count is now made. Now, what happens? We have to ask the audit, it will be put before the audit to, to approve it. Fine. The audit has to approve whatever counts you enter. Go there. You close it now. So audit will come. So the approve adjustments will be available only for the auditor's responsibility. Fine. They will not create a separate responsibility for them and then do it now. Others, the person who is entering the track counts will not be having the approve adjustments. So the similar way, what happens? We can even customize uh, the what's called the fusion application with what happens, removing the approvals basically from the proper users actually. And go there. So you go to this place, go to the approve adjustments, and then click on it, and then we are going to approve it. So I will now go there, P50, and then give a tap, and then click on find now. I'm going to find it out. Click on find now. So you know, see. So audit has to either approve or reject. He will never sell it for recount at all. Only in cyclic counting, what happens there? We have a recounting facility, whereas in a, in a physical inventory, there is no question of recount. So you will know, say whatever the count, man has counted, he has to approve it or whatever. Else. Now here, what happens is the system quantity is now, the snapshot quantity is found out, and then the missing quantity is what? Minus two. Here, four. Why is no uh, plus one plus one and then here what happens uh, this is no minus one and then there is no change in the first one it's likewise it will show you all this thing uh, it will not even show you the what's called item details all these things and information are available now you can now see the lot number you can now see the serial numbers so the plus and minus adjustment quantities so he has to take an action of either approve or reject <clears throat> let us say on one of the things he has not taken an action so on the remaining he has approved it fine go there and upon approval again adjustments are not processed Fine. There, in cycle counting, upon approval, the adjustments gets processed here. It is not so. Fine. Go there. Let's commit. So it is not done. And remember, one of them is uh, basically he has not taken any action. If he has not taken any action, what happens? You'll not see what happens. Fine. Close it. No and then what happens? You'll not go to the physical inventories. And then double click on it. And then you'll not query it. Fine. Control F1. You'll not query it. And go there. Here, what happens? I will not go to the tools. And then I will not launch adjustments. Adjustments are launched separately. 
after the audit approval, we are going to launch it. You know, launch it this month. And then what happens? The adjustment account will be given with the financials. I don't know, put some junk account over here. And then go there, click on launch it. This is going to fail. Because what happens? One of the uh, account, he has not taken any action at all. If you go there and see, there's no point, he has not taken any action. So it will not complete it with a warning, actually. And then view the output, it will not clearly say, what on the view log, I guess. View log. It will clearly say that what happens, adjustments are not processed because what happens, uh, there are still uh, adjustments requiring approval in the physical inventory. So Oracle inventory has not posted any adjustments for this physical inventory. So if you go and then have a look at it, the stock will not show you the same stock. And go to the online availability and then online economy. And then if you make a check of it, it will be 47, <coughs> then 7 and 2. So the stock levels will be the same. And nothing is possible. So 47 has now become 45. The 7 has now become 9. The 2 has become 1. But the adjustments have not been processed. So we go there, and then what happens? We'll now ask the audit approve and go there, go to the accounting, and then what happens? You go there, go to the physical inventory, and then go to the approve counts now, and go to the approve adjustments, fine, go there. And then you will now put the word fine over there, your app, and then click on fine now. So we are finding it out. So now what happens? You will now approve this also. Or let us say he's now rejecting it. So 47 has been counted as 45. He's rejecting it. He says that 47 will be definitely be there. He's not agreeing with the counter's quantity. The counter has counted as 40, 45, but he says, no, I am rejecting it. So it will keep that spot as one. And he feels that the counter has not counted properly or something like that. So because of which, what happens, he is rejecting it. So the up, the, uh, the audit has to take an action of either approve or reject. Then only what happens, they can post. If anything is none, what happens? Even if one of the tags is none, what happens? It will not process at all. Cutless commit, fine. Then order. Now let us go and then launch the adjustments. You go to the physical inventory and then let us launch the adjustments. Fine, go there. You go to the tools and then go to the launch adjustments. This time, what happens? It will be all be processed. And then put a junk account over here. Fine. And then in reality, what happens? The financials will give you. So once when you launch it, what happens? You can also see the adjustments will be processed. Then we'll close it now. You'll not see. There will not be any yellow color at all. It will be running smoothly. And then that will be getting done. You can also see. It's not so the costing also has taken place. So it's not completed. Now if you go and then see the physical stock, what happens? You can also see. You go to the online availability and then go to the online quantity. Now, what happens? You can also see the stock is getting adjusted. So 47 has been counted as 45, that is rejected. So 47 will be retained as a channel fine. Go there. 7 has now become 9, he has uploaded it. 2 has become 1, he has uploaded it. it has been so this completes the process of physical inventory in eBus. Is it clear? Any doubts? Nana, can I ask you a question? Yes, tell me. Yeah. Tell me. Hello? Tell me, tell me. Yeah. So Nana, uh, to understand this the whole process, um, so we have to involve our internal auditors also, so that uh, yeah, internal auditor can in, be involved. But what happens? Whatever external auditor says, he's that's fine. Uh, external auditor, the one who is going to certify your balance sheets and so what happens? That is final. Internal auditors can what happens? Uh, guide the external auditor in uh, what happens? Doing this, not fine. Uh, they will not say why the quantity is missing or something like that. Whatever you'll ask, and then internal auditor will be giving an explanation to the external auditor. So this is with the collaboration of the internal auditors and external auditors. Internal auditors are your own company auditors and so what happens? Sir? Correct. External auditor may not agree with whatever they give a justification. But if all depends upon the how much of a big pity you are giving it. In a company, what happens? We used to give a 2 lakh, 3 lakh rupees worth of pity. <laughs> and so what happens? That guy will never say anything at all. <laughs> okay. So then in, in a reality, uh, in, someone in, will... In theory, what happens if you see external auditors, internal auditors only will help the external auditors, right? They will, not order, they will not do anything other than that. Correct. In understanding your what happens, your way of working actually. They will he'll ask so many questions for which what happens, the internal order will not come up immediately with that. So so my second question here in Nana is that how we will count the real inventory that is sitting in the warehouse? Someone will go there and no, give no, us no, the count? Every warehouse will be counted. Each and okay. every warehouse will be counted. On theory, I'm telling again on theory. And then you can even void certain things basically. It will be all sub inventories. Fine. Every warehouse will be counted. Actually. Yeah, because sometimes maybe in the system, you know, your inventory is different or than the, you know, in the physical. Theoretically you know. speaking, what happens? You have to count each and everything. Okay. But practically, it doesn't happen. <clears throat> okay, got it. Thank you. Any other questions on this physical inventory? Good. Uh, another, yeah, tell me. Another transactions are adjusted are recorded in material transactions. Re the, the adjustments will be posted to the adjustment account actually. Okay. The adjustment account so, is doing now, it will be posted to the adjustment account. And then what happens? The financials will not take a report on how much was missing or how much is going to be excess, and then they will not give it to the management. Okay. 
Okay, so if you go to the view material transaction, uh, this yeah, record should not be there, right? Yeah, this is what is it. If you go to the view material transaction, also you can see, you now fine, go there, it's very good question, fine, go there, go to the transaction, then go to the middle transaction. Here also we can see all the adjustments over there. The physical inventory adjustments came over, you will see now. I'm not putting only today's date, or uh, 1st of June, fine, go there, you go there, you'll see this now. Fine. If you go to the what's called, you go down, you'll see this now. You can now see it's a physical uh, adjustment, inventory adjustments. All these things are posted as a transaction. Each and every transaction. This has done been on what happens on a cycle count, and then this is a the source type is physically inventory. You can now see all the things that what happens that your uh, reasons and other things. If you have put anything, what happens you can also record it. It is also cost protected. And remember, in uh, fusion, costing is separate. Fine, costing is done separately. But here, what happens? It is costing is implicit as far as EBS is concerned. As and when the transactions are processed, what happens? You be getting costed. Whereas in fusion, you have to push it into what happens? Uh, transfer it to costing model, and then, then what happens? You have to cost it. Any other questions on the physical inventory? Good. Then fine. So we have now completed the accuracy. Now. So we have now completed the accuracy. So ABC analysis, cyclic counting, and physical inventory. Now we will now go to some funda structure. Go to the fundas. So what happens? You know, begin with the item defining attribute. So what exactly is an item defining attribute? No, no. Are you showing the physical inventory fusion as well? Yeah, we are going to. Oh, sorry, I'm forgotten. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I totally forgotten that. So we have to do the physical inventory infusion. No, fine. Okay. I thought. <laughs> okay. If I make any mistake, please then and there you correct me. I have to go and then see the physical inventory infusion. We have to see the physical inventory infusion. So let us now see the physical inventory infusion. Go there and then. There. <laughs> So we'll now log in. My my login is P15 now. Fine. Whatever I'm putting it, you have to put your numbers now basically. Fine. Oracle 123, capital go, and then I log in. Now we are going to do the physical inventory on this now. Fine. Go click on the zoom icon. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? You go there, and then you go to the warehouse operations and go to the inventory now. And click on the inventory. So warehouse operations inventory. And then in the inventory, we have seen all the tabs now. <clears throat> fine, like what I'm mean, for the organization of fine P503 is off. Fine, go there. But the third org which we are doing now. Fine. And then what happens? I mean, the receipts, the pick waves, the pick slips, the inventory, the shipments, everything has been completed. Now we are into the counts also. In the counts also, what happens? We are now completing the cyclic counting. Now we have to go for physical inventory. Now. And then you click on it, and then here what happens? You go there, and then what happens? You go and then click on manage physical inventory. So, so we are now going to create a physical inventory. Fine, click on the manage physical inventory. So let us now give a plus and then create a physical inventory over there. Now. Fine, click on plus. And then the inventory name is P50. Underscore PHY underscore INV. And go there. Now you take a copy of it now. And go there. Put in the description. <clears throat> and then what happens? You go there. It will be sub inventories will be normally all. Only, right? all. And then the date on which you go date is not going to be You exclude zero balances. Fine. Not necessarily fine. You have to even count the zero balance also. Dynamic tags are always allowed. Right? Then what happens? You go down. Approvals is what approval. If out of tolerance, it will be always, always no. Otherwise, what happens? We have a quantity level tolerance or the value level tolerance. Fine, everything is there. Fine, go there. all the options are available here. Fine, tag type is default. Fine, go there. And then uh, starting default tag, I will not say what happens. The 2001 now. Fine, go there. So you'll be generating five tags actually. Fine. Here we have one option. Fine, we can even what happens? Do the sorting now. First sequence is what sub inventory. Then afterwards locator. Afterwards item. Afterwards solution. Likewise, what happens? You cannot do it. And by which what happens? The tags gets allocated. So tag allocation can be what happens? Uh, Prioritized based upon so this option is not available in, in cycle counting. This is available only in physical inventory, and then this such option is not available in the EBS also. Right? The, gen the generation sequence, how you want to do it. Fine, this way you can do it. <clears throat> you go there, and then I'll open the supplementary. Then afterwards, what happens? The locator item provision is coming. Fine, whatever option you want, you can just do it. Click on save and close by which whatever the physical inventory gets created. So click on save and close. So. Uh, so the physical inventory is now created. Now we go there. Now we have to take a snapshot. So in uh, in uh, EBIS in the infusion, what happens? The advantage is what you go to the actions, and then keep on doing one by one every time. So first generate the physical inventory snapshot. Afterwards, keep on doing one by one. So that is that is the way. What happens? It is now guiding you all these things. Now fine, click on the physical inventory snapshot. By which what happens? The concurrent will run now. It will not take a snapshot. So eight six zero concurrent is now running. Fine, go there. We will not have a look at it now. So you click on it and then go there, and then you will not click on it. We'll now click on this navigator icon on the left hand side, and then here what happens? You go to the more now, and then there on the tools, you click on the schedule to process. On the tools schedule process, you go there and see now. So you can now see this process coming up now. <clears throat> 
So now what happens? You can now see the physical. This is not going to physically freeze it. Actually, it's a logical freezing. Actually, fine. The physical snapshot has been created. Now you go there, and then now yeah, once when that is completed, what happens? You go to the actions. The remaining will be coming as such. No fine. So the remaining will come only when you make a research. No, fine. Then only it will come. No. After the snapshot, only the remaining activities are possible. You go there as you make a research. No. Fine. As of now, what happens? If you see the bottom, what happens? The snapshot date is not coming. Fine. Uh, once when you make a research, it won't say when it is all complete. No. Click on search, it won't say. When the snapshot was completed, was completed. Dynamic tags are a lot of time. So now it's not coming fine. Go to the actions, and then first activity is complete, but now go and then generate the physical tags. Click on generate physical tags. So we are given the 2000 number, the start number. So what happened? The concurrent is running for generating all the five tags. Fine. 861. You can now see this. We refresh it. You can now see the 861 concurrent running. So by which what happens? All the tags will be running as such. So once when it is completed, what happens? You can go for the next activity now. So it is the infusion. Uh, the the biggest advantage is what it will now guide you step by step. Is it what you have to do next? And then click on it and again make a search of it now. Click on search, and then afterwards you go to the actions and then afterwards you are generated. Then what happens? Record the physical inventory tax. And go there and now record. Click on record physical inventory tax. So we are going to record it. So here what happens? The 2001 to 2005 is coming now. Fine. The CC one is there. Fine. Go there. And then CC1 count quantity. So 47 is there. Let me count as 45 now. Fine. We can even void or unvoid depending upon the audit uh, audit's recommendation actually. So CC2, fine. Uh, again, uh, uh, Thomas told me that what happens, there will be a plus mark, which what happens, you can now see the uh, what happens, uh, lot number now. But here, uh, serial number is visible, lot number is not visible. Here. There is no even plus mark. Come on, Thomas. What to do now? Fine. For this, <laughs> I don't know how to find out. The, you can go to the view and then go to the columns now. Fine. Go to the columns and then see whether any lot number is there or not. You can see that. Click on the manage columns. If there is any lot number to be nice. Fine. There's no lot number here. You cannot bring it to the right hand side also. Because I, I, I somehow other I don't like uh, the way in which the fusion is uh, basically doing it. So here, what happens? I will not say. Uh, this it is there uh, below, I guess. Huh? Here? Below, below the more record you have selected. If you come down, scroll down. Uh, scroll down. Oh, 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 oh. When you select it, what happens? It's not showing on the bottom, basically. Okay. <laughs> so if you select it, what happens? It's not showing on the bottom. There, say lot numbers. <laughs> Previously, what happened? There is a one uh, arrow mark was there. So here, what happens? Is at least showing over here now. Lot number. Good. So Nana, can I ask a question? Tell me that. Yeah. You can ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um. So these are the items you like showing and uh, and le left to that the tag number. Yeah. So let us say if we have 20 items mm -hmm. in the inventory mm -hmm. uh, and if we are creating a tag, mm -hmm. it will create those 20 tags, right? Whatever the sequence we, we, exactly. we will start. For every lot, there will be a tag and every serial, there will be a tag. Fine. So okay. 20 items, which will be resulting in 50 tags or 60 tags. Okay. And on the other hand, that uh, uh, count quantity, yeah. you entered 45. Yeah. So this is the count we will get it from the inventory, like on hand quantity. And what we have counted, he has now shown that it is now forty five, so that we are entering in the system. Okay, so whatever the real count we have, we are entering here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. Thank you. So now uh, ten was having what? How much? Uh, four quantities now. Uh, two and three has been counted as three and four, so three is now I'm counting it as four now. And then this is now four, and then what happens? I'm not counting it as five now. I'm going to click on five now. And then here, what happens? It now shows you the serial number also. Fine, one thousand three. So let us say this is missing, and then one out, one out, one I don't say zero, and then here is no one. That's it. We recorded the counts. So the person has recorded the counts. Fine. Remember, audit will be sitting before them, and then what happens? We have to do everything before audit. Actually. Click on save and close. By which what happens? Recording of the physical tags is now complete. Click on save and close. So Nana, does zero means like there is no quantity for this item? Exactly. Zero means there is no quantity. <clears throat> fine. One means what it is present. Now. Serial numbers, you'll be putting either one or zero only. Right? Only for the lot numbers and other things or revision numbers, what happens, you'll be putting uh, the exact quantities. Right? 15 out of which 13 are there. Right? <clears throat> now having done this, what happens, you make a research now. Click on search, and again search now. And, searching it and, go there. and then here, what happens, you go to actions, and then what happens, this is not done, the record is not done. Right? You'll not, they will not ask the audit to approve. Right? Click on approve, approve physical inventory. Right? Go there. He's not going to approve it. So he will not take an action now. Right? All the, uh, what happens, the accounts are shown as what? Uh, one, uh, what happens? The counts are now shown as what? With this one now. So uh, one of them is missing here now. If I go there. So CC2, what happens? It is now, what happens? The snapshot quantity is one, the count quantity is one. He is not saying approve. He is not approving it. And the second one, what happens? You can even reject it also. Go there. Now 47 is now counted as 45. You go there and then show it as what happens. Now approve or reject also. And then he is not approving it. 
and then here what happens it is not uh, this is not three again cc2 fine i don't know why it is not coming in zigzag fashion you go there you select it and here what happens you go there three is now counted as four now is appropriate and then here what happens the one which is there on the what happens the serial number fine go there you, you, the bottom i think it will be showing you the serial numbers on the serial number has to be shown here the serial number is 103 fine go there 103 is present uh, 103 has been counted as zero what happens it is not coming as this you know but uh, the count is exactly same for the other serial number. It is not coming. I don't know why. The 101 is there, but there is no difference at all. So that means what? It doesn't need an approval, it seems. <clears throat> so uh, 101 is there. And then uh, for this, maybe if uh, any quantity is not mismatching, then audit approval is not required. Maybe. I'm not sure about it. Man. The law is working actually. So all these things are approved. Now, what happens? You have to save and close. And then what happens? Here, do it now. Fine, that is not change the status to approve now. Fine, click on save and close. So, click on save and close. So, approve physical inventory adjustments. Fine, so he's going to approve it. Fine, click on save and close. It's not approved again. <laughs> so, it's now approved now. So, once upon approval, what happens? The adjustments will not be processed. And then, what happens? You have to process the approvals or process the adjustments actually separately. And go there. And then click on find now. Search for it now. Now, there. And go there. Go to the actions. And then, here, what happens after that? What happens? We have to approve. We have to post it also. And then finally, what happens? We can even purge the physical inventory itself. So what happens? Your records, your database will be. You will be taking a backup, and then afterwards you'll not purge it. So it will go there, and then post the physical inventory adjustments. So by which what happens? It will be done. Adjustment date is okay. Then click on OK. <clears throat> and then now adjustments of process 962 is now running. Fine, go there. And then click on the monitor process and see this now is now running. So once when it's run, what happens? Once it's completed, what happens? You can go and then see the stock over there. Go, there, go to the next tab region and then what happens? Uh, put E and then remember only for the first time uh, or the first time you had to fill the full URL and then afterwards what happens up to com is sufficient now. And go there. <coughs> it will be coming and then let us now go there. Click on it and then you go to the what's called your warehouse operation. Then go to the inventory now. You go to the warehouse operation inventory and then have a look at the stock now. And we are in the P503 stock. There is only three items that they are in this one. So if you click on search blank search, if you make it, what happens? It will not show all the contest. So 47 has been adjusted to 45, and then what happens? 7 has now become 9, and then one, 2 has now become 1. So this completes what happens your physical inventory. If you expand it, it will not show you the what happens organization, and next one, it will not show you lot wise also. Expand it, expand it. So lot 10 is having 4, and then lot 20 is having 5. And then here also serial numbers, it will not show you. Click on the expand it, it will not show the serial numbers. So you know, the organization thing, click on it now. And then there's a sub inventory, if you expand it, what happens? It doesn't show anything. The bottom, what happens? It will not show the serial numbers. If you go to the serial number details, what happens? It will be showing the serial numbers. In fact, what happens in our company? Uh, uh, the what happens? The transactions are not allowed. Sometimes the audit will not say, "Please uh, freeze all the transactions." But what we do is we open up the back gate, and then there happens there will be a security there, and then we'll be keeping a notebook also. And then if there is anything urgently required during two days, what happens? We'll not draw, and then we'll not write on the notebook. The counters who are going inside counting it, what happens? Whatever has been issued, they will now add it up and then they will not show it to the auditor. So that way we used to do it now. Uh, because some auditors will be strict and so what happens? Uh, uh, we will not allow him to go and then walk into the inventory at all. <laughs> they will be given so much of a food mela, everything will be there. And then what happens? Uh, uh, we will now ask all of our lady staff to what happens? Uh, come and then sit before him and then chat. I mean, all sorts of uh, <laughs> jig-jack things will be doing it now. <laughs> So by which what happens, we will even issue the items and then what happens, that the way we used to do it in this part industry is more difficult. <laughs> so company to company it varies actually, but, uh, the way in which you deal the physical inventory. Uh, Nana, are you here? Uh, the option for logical and physical freezing, uh, yeah. where is, where is, where that is, is that, that is the theme actually, by Oracle by default does not freeze you, freeze you physically. And then if the okay. audit insists that what happens, no transactions are allowed, what happens? We have to ask the technical team to correct it. So in technical, okay. what happens in EBUS, we can very well do it now. Fine. I, here, what happens? There is no control at all. Fine. Oh, yeah, can we at least, can we see that in EBUS? Uh... EBUS also, I don't know. Fine. Only you have to ask okay. the technical team. Fine. Technical team okay. only will, 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 will go to the back end and then what happens? They will remove the comment. It gets commented out. So the commenting portion, okay. what happens? They will not remove it and then they will do it now in our company. But uh, I am not aware of how they do it actually. Okay. Here, what happens? Uh, the entire thing is now with the, uh, the help of the Oracle, uh, because the technical database, the database tables cannot be modified by technical at all. Okay. So, uh, I don't know how it is being done. That they have to discuss. And if you raise the SR, uh, Oracle will immediately tell you about how to do that. Maybe some uh, hints they will now give it to technical for doing it. 
Now what happens from release 13 onwards, what happens, uh, we are now having an on-premise instance also. And so what happens, uh, now technical have uh, got a full grip on the entire database. Not only a cloud. On-premise uh, coming. And even in cloud also, what happens, they are opening up many, many arenas for the technical to what happens, modify now. Fine, now as you're coming up, it's gradually. So if you attend a technical training, they will not tell you about what exactly they can do, a backend and then uh, what not, what, what they can do, what, what is not possible, everything they can do. Apps to Fusion is the best uh, institute for uh, conducting a technical training actually. You can uh, go and then join there and then uh, they will give you plenty of information. Okay. And I have even uploaded one of the, what happens, the, the DF of descriptive flux fields in my uh, channel, Anantanana, when, how the DFFs are being configured. Their way of presentation is also very professional. But they are very expensive. They are charging around $800, $900, US dollars actually. So much of the money they are charging. <clears throat> that is the only problem. <laughs> Otherwise, what happens, their uh, trading is, uh, uh, it is not affordable basically. That's the only thing. And everybody cannot think of it. Good, then fine. This completes the physical inventory in, uh, what happens, uh, in... Uh, no, no, can I ask you one question on the... Yeah, there is no need. You, you, you can ask any name whenever you want now. You know? yeah. So, no, no, uh, see, uh, we have completed the physical inventory and we check the quantity as well. After the approval, there, those quantities got adjusted. But what is the accounting entries that where we can go and see the adjustment? Of you know, fine. Here in Fusion, what happens, we have to transfer transactions to costing. So only when you transfer the transactions to costing, it will get costed. Here what happens, it gets costed automatically. You see, here what happens, upon completion, everything is getting costed in eBay. What happens, we have to push it into costing module, then only what happens, it will get costed. So that you can see my previous videos, what happens, it will all be explained. Do the costing. Okay, so we are not transferring the transaction to costing yeah. module in Fusion? Transfer, transfer, transfer transactions to inventory, from, from, from inventory to costing has to be done, and then of course, you have to perform the costing of that. Costing has got setups also, everything is explained in the previous video. Okay. Okay. At, at least if you can outline the process, like uh, what you process? Just go through the record. Everything is now fully explained on the costing videos. Oh, in the in the previous video? Okay. No problem. Go, the, go through the previous videos. It will be explaining about how to do the setups of the costing. Costing setups are really very tough, actually. It has been enhanced also. And then what happens here? If items are not costed, remember transfer orders will not work. Fine. If anybody has succeeded in transfer orders in this group, if anybody has succeeded, I think nobody has uh, reached that stage as far as practice is concerned. Now, fine, please do it. And then again, I'm insisting upon everybody to what happens, uh, practice on their own structure only. Fine. Do not practice directly on my structure because mine is already set. And then what happens if you do it, it will work. And then uh, you will now feel, okay, yeah, I have done it. And then when you go to the field, and then you will now find some mistakes here and there. And then you will now. You know, even cry now. When, because I've seen many students what happens approaching me said this is not working, that is not working. Very silly mistakes. In a, in a professional, in your uh, in your production instance, if you make mistakes like this, what happens? We have to discard those data. Then what happens, there will be so much of a junk there. So try to be very professional on the on the what happens on the customer's instance now. Fine. Do not populate any junk data. You have to have it as a you, you, that must be coming as a habit for you. Fine. So please do the thing in itself. And then what happens, do each and every setups and then what happens, try to check it up. What happens, you'll be having a look and feel of everything. By watching alone is not sufficient. When you put your hand, then what happens, it will go into your heart. Again and again repeating. Because I have seen many guys. One girl was virtually trying for me. She is studying a California instance and then I was in the temple actually. I cannot use my phone at all. Fine, was already in a silent mode. Fine. She was having a big problem with the customer actually. Some silly mistakes she has made. So likewise, what happens will be happening as well. <clears throat> so you can uh, contact me on my phone number from uh, 3rd of July. I'll be reaching Madras on 3rd July. Otherwise, what happens? My WhatsApp number is always there. Thank you. <clears throat> That's it. Fine. We go there. Go for the inventory fundas now. So we are going to begin item defining attributes. I will now explain what exactly is item defining attributes. So here, what happens? Go there. And then whenever you have completed your talk, what happens? Uh, please uh, mute your mic now. I'm muting all of you. So have a habit of muting. Go to the AWT when the master comes. So in uh, EBIS, what happens? Uh, we have 16 tab regions. Fine, that has been reduced to around six or seven. Fine, they have been clubbed together. Fine, like work in process. And then what happens? Your manufacturing, <clears throat> your uh, whip is there, and then your costing is there. Fine, other something. The, all the rel relevant ones have been clubbed together. Fine, like this, it has been done. If you go to the inventory, what happens? The first attribute is called the item inventory item. 
if this is not enabled we cannot do anything on the inventory at all like what happens we cannot do the serial control we cannot do the lot control revision control location control nothing at all so this is basically a gateway attribute actually so if this gateway is not on what happens we cannot do anything at all in the inventory so this is a inventory gateway attribute so if you go there and then we have one document on this now so one inventory extracts is there if i go there on day 5 inventory day 5 what happens we have a inventory extracts now fine again db is documentation inventory day 5 you have one inventory extracts now fine go there double click on it now so here what happens you know this is the functional area so every functional area will be defined by one or more item defining attributes fine is an inventory item so for purchasing what happens we have there are two gateways are there one is what purchased fine this is one so if you go there and then see this map and go to the purchase and go there so the first one is a gateway and then in the order management what happens if we go there and then see this map and go to the order management <clears throat> so if you go there go to the order management here what happens the internal order there is another gateway so that is for internal requisition this is for iris so this is for iris so and go there so there are two such gateways are there remember iriso is now come in uh, fusion as irto internal requisition transfer orders it has now come from release 13 now when i meant to work on it now fine so once when i have an access to release 13 what happens i will be working and then i will now make what happens a documentation for irto fine irto is not available in release 12 we are working on it. so it is a, it has some come in release 13 now fine so we will wait for it <coughs> and the already anita has shared a document now anita has already given a document on uh, what happens irto fine go through that and then we only have to practice it fine. and there are some extra steps when compared to the transfer orders no fine just have a look at it now fine there what happens the transit uh, what happens your distance also is mandatory <clears throat> so once we are giving two transit times what happens we normally enable it and then what happens leave it as such no fine but distance in kilometers as well as or kilometers or meters or whatever it is miles or whatever it is along with the amount, value also is mandatory that is what it is written there so just follow that <clears throat> don't ask any question why, what the distance is going to do all these things no fine so that has been configured like this and so what happens you have to follow extract so watch the irto document given by anita and then that will be what happens helping you Hey Rajesh, I have not forwarded it because I have been forwarded separately. I will not forward it to you. Know, fine. I have DO document. I will not forward it to them separately. Okay, thank you. So what happens? The MS MRP is now represented by MRP planning method. The cost management is now enabled by. So these are all the what happens? The functional areas. Now the functional areas have been enhanced as far as what happens? The fusion is concerned. So they have even brought in more functional areas for other modules like fine, like uh, what happens? Uh, the product accounting and then a product information system like this. What happens? They have added more. So when, as and when you learn the modules, what happens? You will understand the functional area item defining attributes. Fine. Those modules, whenever you are learning it, what happens? They will not teach you which are all the item defining attributes. So this is the item defining attributes. And then what happens? I will now show you this fusion also. Fine. It is all the same thing. Fine. For the inventory item and the purchase item, fine. all this thing, costing enabled, all this thing. Other. I will now I will now show you fusion later. Then afterwards, next is what you go there and then see the what happens? Your status attributes. The status attributes provide a definite functionality. Fine. They provide a functionality to the item. Fine. Go there and see this now. Here, what happens? It goes there, and then here the status attributes, the stockable. If you enable it, what happens? It allows you to stock the item in an asset sub inventory. It allows you to stock the item in an asset sub inventory. And then there must be a corresponding IDA. Fine. Every status attribute will be having IDA. Fine. So this is the IDA of this. If this IDA is enabled, then only what happens? Stockable is enabled. If this is not enabled, we cannot do the stockable at all. I will not show you. Fine. Go there. So here, what happens? I go to the inventory now. Uh, here, what happens? Inventory is not enabled. The gateway is not on. Fine. If you try to enable it, what happens? It will not say cheapo. I will not do it. Fine. It must be inventory item. So another way, an item is an inventory item. What happens? It will not be possible. So there are two types of items. Are there? One is an inventory item, and one is a non-inventory item. Like what happens? I am going to buy a boiler or a turbine for the plant. Actually, fine. They will never come into the sub inventory at all. They will be what happens? They are coming and then they will be installed on the shop floor itself. So they are all called what happens? Enterprise assets. So enterprise assets are all boiler, turbine, your lathe machine, are all enterprise assets. And then apart from that, what happens? You have a fixed assets like land, building, machinery, everything is all fixed assets. So both the fixed assets as well as enterprise assets are non-inventory items. So they will be covered in the respective modules. No fine go there. So this inventory, this training on inventory will not cover which is inventory item. So is what is. So you go there and then enable the inventory. Fine go there. I will know what happens. I remove this. No fine go there. Remove this. <clears throat> here it is not possible fine go there so this is what is no set by six value again this is this functionality is not come i already explained you on this now fine so that functionality is not there you go there now what happens if it is not stockable i cannot make a transaction fine. click on transaction is not possible so item must be stockable to make it as transactable fine, go there. so that that sort of what is called yeah interlock has been provided now so you won't make any mistakes at all fine. there are so many interlocks are available here and one and six 
So the interlocks are almost similar to what we have in EBS, not going to go there. So here, these are all the dependencies now, attribute dependencies. Stock, attribute stockable must be set to no, if inventory is set to no. Transactable must be set to no, if what happens, stockable is set to no. Like what there are so many dependencies. And then what happens, there are relationship between the item attributes also. If this is no n, what happens, this has to have a value. Like, whatever, like this, what happens, there are some uh, required attributes, no, fine. what is required. And then afterwards, what happens, we have interdependent attributes. So even if you go through the document of Fusion, what happens, it will be giving you all these things. It is almost similar to what we have in uh, eBiz, which are updatable. All these things are available in your, uh, what happens, your uh, user guides and implementation guides of the event. <clears throat> so all these things are almost same. Fine, there is not much of a difference. As well. But what happens, uh, we work on a template basis. And so what happens, we don't set the attributes directly manually. So when you apply a template, automatically everything gets set as such. So in, in Fusion, what happens in EBIS, we have around 10 status attributes. So here I have in, in meant only eight, now actually it's a very old document. So what happens in R12, they have clubbed both process manufacturing as well as discrete manufacturing together. So what happens, the, the process enabled and then the recipe enabled are two more attributes which have been added over here. So there are 10 status attributes. So in Fusion also we have this. We will now have a look at it now and go there in the fusion. So we will now go to the home and then click on the product management. <coughs> so you go there, go to the product management and then go to the product information management. Now. So there, what happens when you go and then create an item now. and go there, you know, you go and then open up an item now, go there. We will now open up an existing item and then have a look at it now. So click on it and then go for browser items now. And click on the task carousel and then go to the browser items now. So once when you go to the browser items, what happens? You can now see this. I will not give a blank query on this one. I'm search now. <clears throat> and then I will now push this column over here. And I will now open up one of the items and then have a look at it now. <clears throat> and then go to the specifications and then the specifications, what happens, you know, see around seven such things are coming up. And then you have to look at it. So here, what happens if you go to the inventory? What happens? The first is an item defining attribute, IDA. So go there. So inventory item is this, stockable and then transactable or basically status attributes. But there's no more, indi no indication that it is an item defining attribute is a status attribute like that or no, there's no indication. So you must know only these things. So if you go to the purchasing, what happens, you can also see the IDA coming up now. IDA is the first one. And then what was purchasable is a transactable attribute. Right? It's a stock, is a, is a status attribute. This is the item defining attribute. So likewise, what happens, we have some functionality also on, on these things now. Like if we go to the order management, what happens, if customer orders, if IDA is enabled, what happens, we can now populate the item on a price list. Now. And then what happens, only with the customer orders enabled, then only what happens, they can put the item on the sales order. So this facilitates population of an item on a price list. This facilitates population of an item on a sales order. So some additional functionality have been added to this on some other areas basically. So when you learn that module, what happens, it will be teaching you everything fully. No? So this no, is no, I, have a, I have a couple of questions. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, uh, the purchased and purchasable, right? Yeah. If, if we can go back to the yeah. purchasing, no? the invent, purchasing one. Purchased and yeah. yeah. So, so can we can we uh, like uh, change it interchangeably? Like, let us say, uh, this is the purchased item, but uh, I want to set uh, purchasable now. Can we do that kind of a combination? Or it's always yes, yes. Purchase is like what happens to your passport now. Fine. Purchasable is like a visa. Fine. So okay, unless they... you have a passport, you cannot have a visa. And if you have a visa, if you have no passport, what happens? You cannot do it. No? Fine. So both the things must be yes. Then only what happens? You can do that. What happens? Purchasing of an item actually. Okay. Got if it. Purchasing is yes. What happens? Purchase orders cannot be created. But what happens? We can do the taxation and then we can do something else. Fine. Negotiations can be done. Fine. Sourcing can be done. And negotiations basically was so seen. But purchase orders cannot be created. So the gateway attribute is on, but what happens? Uh, purchase requisitions and purchase orders cannot be created. This isn't. There. But other related activities can be done over there. So there are so many things which you can set up because the gateway is on. So can we do like this? Like let us say I purchase this item. Yeah. But uh, in future, I don't want to do any purchases. From that time onwards, what happens when you make it as no, you cannot purchase it. Whatever is purchased right. is purchased, right? Whatever okay, is, got it. that time onwards, what happens, it will yeah. be up. Okay. Another question on asset. Yeah. So, so, so asset flow in, in, in fusion is that, let us say, if I'm procuring some asset, right? Let us say, let us say something like a laptop. Okay. <clears throat> and I procured the laptop. Okay. And, uh, and what would, what could be the flow? Like, like here, like I will put that, uh, 
item attribute is uh, not at all uh, what happens uh, here in ebiz we will now have what happens uh, we have asset management we know right? this is a tab right. here what happens is not having any tab region at all right? that has been removed from you when asset has been removed why that you have to go then see the fixed assets module right? so in the ebiz we have an asset management I, that also i don't know how it's working actually and this also you have rebuildable assets and other things are there basically. Again, so you are saying in fusion there is no asset uh, functionality they, right what, now? what happens it is not on the item attribute now fine they have removed it from the item attribute actually asset is no more an item attribute actually oh and okay only seven are there and then even whatever if you go to the manufacturing what happens the multiple have been clubbed together actually in the manufacturing itself what happens you can see the costing is also clear you go to the manufacturing bomb this item structure is bomb and then this is the costing this is manufacturing like what happens they put the multiple things into one and then uh, some of them have been removed now fine whatever they feel it's not required on an item attribute they have removed so let us say if we want to uh, buy some assets so how, how the flow will work in fusion then no idea at all <laughs> okay so you have to talk to a guy who knows fixed assets anybody in this uh, team who knows fixed assets no i know fixed asset very good fine good. but uh, but but usually you know like uh, in uh, in ebs world what we do is we will procure that item we create a po mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. And then we receive that inventory, and then we will move that one to the. Then you will retire the assets actually. Fine, go there. Fine. Yeah, and move to the fixed asset. You know. Okay. But I don't know who yet. Even I, I don't know both in EBS as well as in Fusion. <laughs> okay. No, no worries. Anybody okay. has got any idea what happens? You can even give a private chat to what happens, Rajesh. That what happens? How to do that now? Fine, go there. If they have any documents, also and help him out in what happens doing the fixed assets part of it. Uh, if since it's not available in the item attribute. Go there. Right. So you go there and then go for the next one now. Fine. Go there. Go there. So this is it. Is it first? Then asset item and expense item. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> now, uh, normally what happens? Uh, I will now say uh, I am not going to build a mo monitor now. Fine. Monitor needs a picture tube, a motherboard, and then ten screws now. Fine. The screw is costing ten paise now. Now tell me, the screw is an asset item or an expense item? Anybody? <clears throat> fine. <clears throat> Two, the screw is an asset item or an expense item. The, the picture tube is now costing me seven hundred rupees, and then what happens? The, the, uh, the motherboard is costing five hundred rupees, and then I am now deploying a labor, and then it is going to cost me around one hundred rupees now. Fine. Let us say the total cost of manufacturing is what one thousand six hundred plus the ten screws is costed one rupee. So the total cost of manufacturing has now come to one thousand six hundred now. So normally what you do is whenever an item is of a low value, what happens? You will not make it as an asset item. It will be an expense item. Now tell me, I am now asking a generic question. The screw is an asset item or an expense item. Anybody can answer this now. Okay, since nobody has answered, I will not tell you. Fine. Screw uh, by any item by nature it is not asset or expense. It is by usage it becomes asset and expense. So in a monitor manufacturing company, screw is now going part of this monitor actually. So thousand six hundred plus one is thousand six hundred and one. If you make it as asset item, in that case what happens? They will know. The pro, the purpose of costing is what you have to derive the selling price actually. So the selling price will be cost price plus a margin or a percentage. You will not add it and then you will not derive the selling price. So to derive the selling price, costing is very important. So here, what happens? One thousand six hundred plus twenty percent margin or one thousand six hundred one and the twenty percent margin is almost same. And then what happens? Let us say it is now arriving at thousand eight hundred or something. The marketing department now price it at one thousand seven hundred ninety nine. Or if what happens, it is now sold at one one seven five zero in the market. They will now put as one seven four nine. So the marketing department will now price the product with what happens with the cost price as a guideline. Actually, they will now reduce. They will never reduce the sale price below the cost price. Right? So, but what happens? They will also do some jugglery. And then if the some person is asking for some ten percent discount, and then they will now say if you are buying hundred monitors, okay, I will now give it to you. So for a large volume of sales, what happens? They will now give extra discounts. But they will always keep in mind what happens. What are the cost price? So that is called margin. The margin earned is very very important. And then what happens if the margin goes below a certain percentage? What happens? They cannot even sell it at all. So here, what happens? The screw which is now being used for manufacturing, which is now contributing to a very low cost, it will be considered as expense item. Whereas in a screw manufacturing company, what happens? That is the output. That is the finished good. And so what happens? That will be an asset item. So based upon the usage, what happens? You make the item as an asset or an expense, and not by what happens? By simply by an item name, what happens? You cannot sell. So in a screw manufacturing industry, what happens? It is an asset item. Whereas in a screw usage company, it is an expense item. What you know? So we have one document on this now. Fine, go there. We have one. Uh, we go back to fusion inventory. And here, what happens? We have one asset expense item now. Fine, go there. Asset expense items is one. Fine, double limit. You know what it is. 
So there are two attributes which makes an item as an asset item. That is true in in eBay also. So here what happens? You know, make these two attributes on. The inventory item must be on as well as the inventory asset value is on. If these two attributes are on, what happens? The item becomes an asset item. You go there and see is nothing. In the inventory, what happens? The ID, the item defining attribute must be on. And then in the costing area, what happens? The inventory asset value must be on. So here also what happens? We have the same thing now. Can go there. So if we go to the manufacturing area, can go there. In the manufacturing area, I'll have this. This is not inventory asset value. So if this is also on, and then in the inventory, what happens? If you have this inventory item was on, this is an asset item. Can go there. This is an asset item. And then otherwise, what happens? It remains expense item. And then when you transact it to a sub inventory, which is quantity tracked as well as asset sub inventory, this transaction is known as asset into asset. So these are the things which comes under this classification of and raw materials, sub assemblies, and then what happens finished goods. So this is one type of a transaction of and that asset into an asset. Then what happens if you do the same thing onto an expense sub inventory? If an asset sub inventory is off, what happens? It becomes an expense sub inventory. And so what happens? These things are all called asset into. So asset item is a kerosene and then issued to the maintenance sub inventory. So when you are issuing the assets, kerosene. Uh, if it is issued to a furnace, what happens? It will be asset into asset, and then if it is issued to a maintenance sub inventory, it will be an asset into expense. So this is the second type of transaction. Of the third type of item itself is an expense item, and then in this industry, you have made it as an expense item. And then what happens? You are not transacting assets. So this is called the expense into asset. The fourth one is what is called expense into an expense sub inventory. These are examples we take. Examples are being given. Out. And the fifth one is what is a non-tracked one. So we are now seen on the what happens the RC and PAR replenishments. There you can see what happens. You'll be uh, doing it on a, what happens straight away onto an, a non-tracked expense. And then if inventory is off, and then if this is on. This is known as a fixed assets or enterprise assets. Right? If the inventory attribute is on, but as inventory asset value is off, this is known as what fixed assets or enterprise assets. Now fine. These are all the examples now. And then if both of them are on, it is a service item actually. Like welding, special cutting, games, etc. Are all service items. So this way, what happens? You define whether item is an asset item or an expense item. So there are five transactions which are available for asset into an asset, asset into an expense, expense into an asset, expense into an expense, and then expense into a non-tracked expense. Expense into a non-tracked expense. So this completes the discussion on asset and expense item. So none. It means in fusion we can uh, we can track the asset items as well as uh, yes, okay. everything can expense item. So okay. what happens as long as the quantity track is enabled? If the quantity track is not enabled, what happens? We cannot track it. Still, let's say in this place, if what happens if asset sub inventory the quantity track is off means what? We cannot do it. As long as the quantity track is on, we can track the quantity. If quantity track is off, what happens? We cannot do it. That is called a non-tracked sub inventory for which what happens? You can now listen to the previous videos about how we are replenishing a non-tracked sub inventory. For example, a stationary shop. So the stationery shop will be having, let us say, 50 reams of paper. Let us say somebody is coming and then drawing it. We will not make an issue at all because what happens? There are low cost items, no issues there. So the stock will not keep on diminishing. And over a period of time, what happens? The stock will not be there at all. So such sub inventories will not even show the stock at all. So if the quantity track is off, what happens? It will not show the stock at all to the management. How much is there? How much of paper is there? So how to replenish that? What happens? Everything has been explained in the previous videos. You can just move those things. So this is not just no fine. Go there. You go for the next stop. So now there is a thing called nettable. Fine. Nettable is the thing. Fine. Go there. If you go on them, see on this what happens. Sub inventory. Fine. Go there. Now. You go there. Go to yes for yes. No fine. Go there. Yes for yes. And the entry now. So in this place, if you go on them, see this no fine. Control F1. What happens? You now see the sub inventory. Fine. Go there. Go there. Go there. Go there. If it is nettable. <clears throat> fine. Nettable. If this is on, that means what? You are keeping the item in a very orderly fashion. Let us say I am not going to keep. Let us say uh, some pencils, some thousand pencils I'm keeping it. And if some user department wanted me to issue thousand pencils, I can very well issue it because what happens is they're all nettable. But if you are keeping it in a shabby manner, what happens if you go on and try to find out the thousand, you will not get only 900. The, another hundred, we don't know in which corner it is lying. You have to keep on going on such, such, such. So you won't be getting it. So such sub inventories are non nettable. If a sub inventory is not nettable, what happens? The planning central will not give any, will not consider the stock at all. So only nettable sub inventories are considered with the planning engineer. So you have to make it as nettable. Otherwise, what happens? If it is not nettable, the inventory in charge has to tell the management about why it is non nettable, like why he is keeping it in a shabby manner. Because sometimes what happens? It's not possible for him to ma maintain the stocks also. He will know your explanation and then be removed. So the planning engine will not consider the stocks for what happens? It's a demand supply balancing logic. So this is only nettable long time there. So here, what happens? Depreciable. So let us say when you keep kerosene or petrol on your inventory, 
what happens over a period of time, it will now evaporate. So once when it is evaporated, we can very well claim depreciation. But what happens is government of India has now put a clear what happens instruction that what happens the humidity must be what happens uh, uh, must be uh, less than 50 80 percent and then what happens the moisture content this much and then what happens your temperature must be this thing and there are so many conditions of that and then the the sub inventories must be maintained on those conditions if you are mentioning it what happens the depreciable can be made on so once when you make the depreciable on what happens the depreciable is on then what happens the financial team will now claim for depreciation for all the stocks which are evaporable so in the balance sheet what happens they will not say what happens this item was lying for this much of a time for which what happens this much of a depreciation is allowed legally so depreciation will be taken by only when this is on and then for putting it on what happens we have to meet all the what happens the statutory requirements of the corporate so this is the depreciation on. and then similarly what happens the quantity track I mean, if the quantity track then only can see this otherwise you cannot see this and then we have seen one more thing called par level planning right? including the atp is basically used by what happens your order management actually right? so the available to promise so once and learn order management i will not teach you about this now fine uh, whereas this part will be taught by ebiz in that allow reservations fine if you reserve it what happens the item gets reserved and then what happens it will not be allowed for anything and then how to uh, unreserve it everything is explained on the ebiz order management actually and then this is a, a lpn control is for warehouse management system fine i can even discuss with tushar Tushar is an expert on uh, WMS now, fine. So it's basically NPL control. And then enable cotonization is also what happens. It is uh, done by another, some other model. The par level planning, we have already seen it. So bulk pick is basically possible, fine. Where what happens, uh, you're now stocking uh, the bolts, nuts, and washers. So there, what happens, uh, the people will now go there and then what happens, they put the hand and then they'll not take it up. And whatever comes in, fine. They're all bulk pick. And so what happens, uh, it will be in it. So likewise, what happens? There are so many such subunits. Whereas in fusion, what happens is there is not having this much of a setup actually. Fine. The number of uh, what happens setups doesn't come down as far as fusion is concerned. Now attribute groups. Now. Fine. In fusion, in in, in EBS, what happens? Is we have around sixteen groups of attributes now. Fine. Here, what happens? We have got around six or seven. Now. So there is an attribute groups now. Status course. This has been enhanced in fusion. Fine. Status course has been enhanced in fusion. Fine. We'll go there and see how it works. So we know how we the status course and go to the good setups and then go to the items and then go to the status course. So if you see the status course over here now, when you go there, there are 10 status attributes are only mixed in one status code. Active means what all the 10 status attributes are on now, right down arrow. If it is a concept, bomb is on, the remaining is not on, when go down. So design means what? Bomb, stockable and transactable law. So what in fusion, what they did is the status code not only have 10 attributes or the status attributes, but apart from that, what happens? It has got some you know, 15 or more. Around 25 attributes have been clubbed into one status attributes. That is nicely done. So that what happens is the moment you apply status, what happens? Those attributes are set to either on or off. You know, see this point with that. So we'll have a look at the status course in fusion. <clears throat> Click on it. And then go to the setup and maintenance now. So in the setup and maintenance, what happens? You go there and have a look at it. Let's go to manage percentage status percentage. Name basically manage item statuses manage items manage items click on it. So here what I'm saying is now active. If it is active, what happens? You cannot see you won't find oh, not only 10 now, fine. There are more attributes have been clubbed together. Very nice data. Fine, around 20, 25 attributes are there. So all these things have been clubbed together. So we can set up this no areas now, depending upon this. We can even create our own status code. Status code can be created. And that can be applied on the template actually. In the template, what happens? Which which status code you will apply? So we can wait now. So that what happens by this the things gets around 25 attributes are getting set in one go. Right. So that what happens? It'll be easy for you. So there's an enhancement when compared to EBIS basically. Item types. Here, what happens? We can even create our own item types actually. If I go there, let us now create our own item. I can cancel it, and then we can now populate on the manage item types. So manage item types, PYP or something. So let me create my own type also. This is only for information purposes. Item types are only for information purposes. It doesn't have any functionality. Well, I'll click on plus one. It's again a lookup code actually. I click on plus one. I will now have a big one item. I go the lookup code. It's a P50. <coughs> It is a purchased item. I'm not reading it. So let me take a copy of it now. Take a copy. And then 
and put in the display sequence. I know, say some sequence I know, is not there. No sequence is not there. Meaning is what I know. Paste it over here. Click on the description. Paste it over here. And then you will save it. So you can even create whatever types you want for your end client, and then accordingly whatever you can populate it. And then click on save and close. And then we can now populate the item type on our what happens on our template actually. So when you create a new item, what happens? There will be coming. Fine, click on it now. We will now go and then populate our item. Fine, go there. You go to manage underscore item status is not fine. Item underscore item class. So there, what happens? We will now go there. Manage item class is the one. So click on the manage item class, and then we will now go to the root item class, and then here what happens? You go there, select, and then click on edit now. So on our template, let me put the item class. I go to the templates on this now. I click on the templates, and then let me query my template now. Fine, go there. Go to the query mode and go to the uh, query by example mode. And then let me query my template now. I go there P50 and go to query it now. So there, what happens? I will not change the item type of this. And select it. And then here, what happens? User item type is what? It drop it down. I will not choose the P50. So this is the one. So I can save it. So what happens next time when you apply this template? What happens? This item type will be coming as this. This is what us. Got it now. So click on save and close. By which what happens? The template is now saved. My item type. Will be. So only for information purposes actually. It doesn't have any functionality as such. Item relationships. I'll be coming to it a bit later. Now, fine. Again, a complex topic. Now, fine. Go there. I'll not come to it a bit. Now. So the next one is units of measures. And again, it's a very complex topic. Actually, this is the toughest topic of inventory. Actually, fine. So tomorrow we are going to take it up now. So all of you, please be present. Fine. It's a very tough topic. Fine. Even one of my students has lost the job also some uh, seven years back. He couldn't understand the class at all. What I'm saying. And then uh, I asked him. It's a very tough topic. Whenever I, he was uh, feeling shy in asking questions, he used to ask me after the class. Even that was also not done. And then he has gone to the field, and then he has wrongly configured. So two, three persons have got stuck, and then people, some people are really unable to understand. Also, fine. It's such a tough topic. So we'll be beginning our units of measures, which is one twentieth topic now. Fine, go there. And then uh, we have around one forty topics on this now. Fine, go there. So let me try to complete by tenth, uh, if not at least by twelfth. I think fine, go there. So that what happens? Uh, people are planning for a holiday actually. Because what happens? We are leaving on first of July to Madras. So uh, so let us now try to complete everything by 12th. Otherwise, what happens? There will be a big gap actually because on 15th we are leaving for Niagara, and then other places now. Houston also is the plan. Chicago also plan. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to do anything. So tomorrow, what happens? We'll be having a look at units of measures. Fine, it's a very tough topic. Fine, all of you be present. There. So any questions on this now? <clears throat> Are you? No questions. Very good. Thank you. Good. Then fine. Yeah. Then the case will not call today now. So. Thank you. Yeah. Then, uh, thank you, Nana. So, I will call you in the evening. Yeah. So uh, Rajesh will be uh, will be connecting at 8 p.m. Eastern now. Fine. Hello. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good. Then, then we will now meet at 9 p.m. tomorrow, India. Bye.